Ready to start writing when you're done. Okay. Good morning, Ms. Barrett, Ms. Drain, Mr. Fedor. Good morning, Judge. Good morning to your court staff. How are you all? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So you're here on Bowden and Common, is that right? Um, I'm here on Kenneth Bowden. That's it. You're not on Common? No, no, Your Honor. Common, maybe that's your sister. Yes, maybe, maybe so. Um, th th that's. So I, I wanted to, well, I, I zoomed in early because I wanted to see if the court was able to um, get in contact with Mr. Bowden because he's currently housed in the Midland. Why would I get in contact with Mr. Bowden? Pardon me? Why would I get in contact with Mr. Bowden? Oh, because he's uh, being housed in the uh, Midland uh, jail. I would be in contact with him for what? I, I, I didn't hear what you said, Judge. I said I would be in contact with him for what? Oh, I, what, I have to be in contact with him. Well, of course, the court, you don't have any, you don't have any business besides what we have on this docket this morning. I was trying to find out if the court was able to um, establish a contact or, or if they have uh, tried to establish a contact with the court. I guess the short answer to that is no. I don't have any reason to get in contact with your client. <laughs> well, Judge, I understand that part. Um, I'm merely informing the court of where he's currently housed. Okay. Good morning, Your Honor. Shelly Drain for the People, P number 60249. Good morning, Your Honor. May it please this court, Yvette Barrett, P58142, appearing on behalf of Kenneth Bowden for PCC today. Hey, what's your question? Well, Your Honor, um, my client would like to be present in court uh, for the PCC. Um, I don't know if the court has been able to uh, connect with the Midland County Jail in order for him to be here. He wants to, to be here for the PCC. How do you know that? Uh, I've been in I've been in contact with him, uh, and. And he uh, and he wants to deal with this court matter as soon as possible. So. You said he's in Midland. Yes, he's in the Midland County Jail. So you're not waiting his presence for purposes of this hearing. You want him here. Yes. I would waive his uh, appearance if the court could get him here 
you know, tomorrow or uh, later on this morning. I don't know. If I can get him here today or tomorrow. You're talking about via Zoom, right? Yes, Your Honor. Let's I'll adjourn the PCC to Thursday, March 14th at 8 30. March 14th? Yes. Why don't we continue? You do me a favor, reach out to your sister for me so we can do kindly as well. I'll do my best. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. Too. See you Wednesday. Uh, Ms. Nelson. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry. Thursday, I'm sorry. Okay. Ms. Nelson. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. What can I do for you? I'm here on uh, Jelani. Um, Second, uh, Delani Ellis. Okay. Call in case number two four zero five six zero five eight zero one. People of the state of Michigan <clears throat> versus Delani Ellis. Even in this charge in count one, domestic violence, third defense numbers. Appearances for the record, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Shelley Drain for the People. P number six zero two four nine. Good morning, Your Honor. Sophia Nelson, Neighborhood Defender Service, on behalf of Mr. Ellis, P77960. I waive Mr. Ellis's presence for the purposes of the probable cause conference. The court will waive the defendant's presence. What's your pleasure? Um, Your Honor, I would like to set this matter for a preliminary exam. Um, right now, I do not have digital discovery, I just have paper. The court will continue to plead not guilty. We'll set this matter for a preliminary examination on March 18th at 10.15. Okay. Now we continue. Thank you. And I did notice that I there was no digital discovery available at this time. So I did send an email to the officer in charge yesterday requesting it. So as soon as I get it, I will send it to you. All right. Thank you, Shelly. Thanks. Ms. Manorino, Ms. Lindsay, good morning. Good morning. Ms. Lindsay, are you there? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready? Dante Smith? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we're ready. Call me case number 2205 940 501 People of State Michigan versus Dante Smith. Defendant is charged in count one, assault with intent to murder. Count two, animals killing, torturing, third degree. Count three and four, weapons, felony, firearms. Defendant also has case number 2205 940601. Defendant is charged in count one. Homicide, murder, first degree, premeditated. Count two weapons, felony firearm. Defendant also has case number 2205 940701. Defendant is charged in count one. Homicide, murder, first degree, premeditated. Count two weapons, felony firearm. Defendant also has case number 2205940801. Defendant is charged in count one. Homicide, murder, first degree, premeditated. Count 
two weapons felony firearms. Appearances for the record, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Lisa Lindsay on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan, P number 39570. And good morning, Maria Manorino, P39531, on behalf of Mr. Smith. For purposes of this proceeding, I'd ask the court to waive his presence. The court will waive the defendant's presence. Today's day is time set for confidence in the hearing. Do we have a report back yet? No, Your Honor, we do not have a report, but I spoke to a Jan Zorka, Z W A R K A, yesterday. The forensic center and she said that it, uh, another report is due in april uh, i inquired about the time frame in terms of the period being um the statutory period running out and she indicated that they have until may the second before the stat statutory hearing runs out and although she could not tell me um the status of the report at this point, she did indicate that they remain optimistic that they could bring him to competency before the May 2nd date. Okay. Well, that being the case, the court will put this matter over. What day do you suggest? Probably not, probably before May 2nd. Correct. Um, how about, uh, Tax day, April, if tax day is still April 15th, April 15th. Okay, does that what date work for you, Ms. Manorino? April it does. 15th? Yeah, that's fine. All right, court will adjourn the competency here to April 15th at 8.30, and Bob will be continued. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Sandy, how are you able to prevent accidents? Wait. Probably, yeah, because um, I thought that was a default that they put that in that you have to Unless, unless I'm entering like as host, because I do host that for Judge Taylor. So maybe that's not, but before that's I, I put in the name. Yeah. 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 Ms. Casco, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. I am Elon Epps this morning for a competency review. Good morning, Your Honor. Mark Fedork for the people, P76177. You know, I have noise in the background. Is there a noise in, in the background from my uh sounds like it? Okay. Okay, let us call the case. I'm sorry. Call the case number two three zero five nine nine six zero zero one people of the state of Michigan versus Kingman Elks. Defendant is charged in count one homicide, murder, first degree premeditated. Count two, weapon self firearm. Answers for the record, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Mark Fedork for the people, P76177. Good morning, Your Honor. Nancy Kester from NDS appearing on behalf of Mr. Elon Epps, P number 80549. And Your Honor, I can, um, may I ask the court to waive his presence? I don't see him on Zoom. He's uh, waive his presence. Today is daytime so for competency hearing. Do we have a report back from the forensic center? Your Honor, I did consult with an independent forensics examiner. Um, at this time, Judge, defense will stipulate to the findings in the um, forensics report that was earlier submitted to the court. Finding of competency? Yes, Your Honor. You as well, Mr. Fedor? We do, Your Honor. The court makes a finding that the defendant is competent to stand trial. What's your question, Ms. Kessler? Your Honor, if we can schedule this matter for a preliminary examination, please. Court will continue the plea of not guilty and set this matter for preliminary examination. Can we do March 12th any time of day? March 12th, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Oh, that's the day. I'm sorry. How about March 21st at 10 o'clock? That works for the people. One second, Your Honor. I have something scheduled at 10 o'clock. I'm sorry. How about 11.30? Uh, 21st on 11, at 11.30, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, that works for the defense, Judge. And for the people right. as well, Your Honor. 11.30, Bob, we continue. Thank, Thank you, Judge. You. Ms. Berry, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Judge. How you doing? Good. You here on county? Yes, Judge. Okay. 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 Case number 240564101, people of the state of Michigan versus Amir County. Defendant is charged in count one and two, assault with a dangerous weapon. Count three, knowingly assault, assault, and battery of pregnant individuals. Count four. Appearances Good morning, Your Honor. Shelley Drain for the People, P number 60249. Uh, good morning, Judge. Melita Barrett, uh, P43238 on behalf of Amira Conley. Ms. Conley, unmute yourself and tell us your name for the record. Amir Conley. What's your pleasure, Ms. Barrett? Um, Judge, I need to uh, put this for a preliminary exam. And the court will continue to plead of not guilty and set this matter for preliminary examination. 
How is March 18th at 10.45? Hold on one second, Judge. Let me look at my book. You said March. Uh, you said 18th? Yes. Hold on one second. And that would be a 10.45? Yes. Yeah, Judge. Judge, that's fine. All right, March 18th at 1045, Bob, we continue. Judge, Ms. Collins, the in-person in 36th District Court. Judge, can you put me in a breakout room with her before we leave, please? Did she leave? No, I'm no. still here. Yeah, could we go in a breakout room, please? <laughs> Go ahead and join. Thank you. Morning. Morning. Thank you. 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 Judge Kennedy, 
Good morning, sir, in Wayne County Jail. What's your name? Sir, in Wayne County Jail, what's your name? Joanna Ellis. Mr. Ellis, your next court date is March 18th at 1015 for a preliminary examination in 36 district courts. March 18th at 
Judge, I was telling you, we used to have a library here. You go straight to the library. You know? I remember I stayed in the library. I didn't know it was open to you guys, but well, I used to sleep in the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> they knew me, so I get in. You know? Oh, okay. People don't have much use for books anymore. Right. Hmm. Teddy. 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 Maybe if I see. Teddy. Teddy. I see. Teddy. 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 Teddy.
Morning, Judge. Hey, good morning. Morning, Lori. So, Your Honor, can I make an inquiry? So, one of my, uh, or my victim in uh, Chappelle's case, uh, he has 11 to 15 family members. Are they all allowed in the courtroom? All of them?
This your code.
We can get started as soon as we get the time. Anytime we can get started. I'll just, uh, my witness was just entering the building, so I'll probably just be like five minutes or so. Okay, we're still waiting. Oh, you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. It looks like the pending is here. Okay.
in your about uh, 9.53, I got uh, my witnesses supposedly downstairs just waiting for me to come up. Okay. I'll, I'll come in at 10. Okay. All right. Your Honor, I do have one witness here, so I would be ready to see it. Calling case 2455677, people of the state of Michigan versus Leon Wills. Defending this charge in count one homicide, murder first degree premeditated. Count two, weapons, firearms, possession by felon. Count three, felony firearms, second defense numbers. Count four felony firearms, second defense numbers. Defendant has an official defender, second defense numbers. Appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Mark Fedoric for the people, D76177. Good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court, Brooklyn Johnson. We have Leon Wills, 246646. Tell me your name for the record, sir. Leon Wills. There is a date and time set for preliminary examination. Are you ready to proceed? People are ready, Your Honor. Do you have any preliminary matters to have to begin with before you call this? I do, Your Honor. Uh, people would offer into evidence what's been marked as uh, people's proposed one. This is the medical examiner's report of Teresa uh, Nguyen. And uh, so we'll show that to counsel. I haven't heard any objection, Your Honor. Judge, I, I would stipulate to the uh, post-mortem report. I would also indicate, Judge, that uh, me and the uh, uh, prosecutor discussed uh, the submission of this uh, last night. Uh, part of that uh, was the uh, toxicology report. Uh, 
he indicated that he was just stipulated to the post mortem report. I would just like to add a couple of reading couple of stipulations of that approval, and that's what the uh, uh, that what the toxicology of the uh, uh, you have any objections to the toxicology? Um, I don't know how it's relevant. I mean, counsel can offer it in his case. I'm not offering it in my case in chief. In the interest of completeness, I'll take the autopsy report as well as the toxicology. That's fine. I, I don't have a copy. Judge, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you my copy for purposes of the exam. Uh, do you want it and you give it back? Just so you can review it. And I would just indicate, Judge, for the stipulation that the uh, Blood alcohol of the decedent at that time was 0 0.171. Okay. And Judge, I'm going to also tender you a copy of the uh, anatomical diagram. Right. So I believe that was included in oh, the uh, report. Um, and then just for the record, all those are admitted then, Your Honor? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, and then just one other item, uh, this would be a certified record of a prior conviction of the defendant, and this is marked as people proposed to. I've shown that to the council. I'm not sure if there's an objection. No objection. May I approach? Yes. Who did you say that the claimant's name is? Uh, it's Art. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> Our fellow Malik Muhammad. Oh, I thought you said something else. Judge, I probably will, uh, in reports and stuff, I probably will refer to him at times as a peak. Okay. Your Honor, if I may just read uh, in part from the ME report. You may. Uh, so, this is a uh, medical examiner report prepared by Teresa uh, Ian MD. This was pursuant to an autopsy that was performed on January 28, 2024. The doctor indicated that her opinion uh, is that death was caused by multiple gunshot wounds. It indicate that uh, the post-mortem examination revealed six gunshot wounds on the body, uh, two, uh, two to the head, two to the neck, one to the chest, and one to the back. And then she further indicated that her, uh, her opinion as far as cause of death, sorry, manner of death, uh, was homicide. And then for the record, uh, this is the uh, postmortem report of our fellow Malik Muhammad. The second. Pardon me? The second. Uh, correct. All right. Court receives that. And then your uh, people are prepared to call our first witness, Aaron Mosley. Sir, please give your name and spelling to the young lady waiting at you there. Please raise your right hand, sir. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat in this box next to me, right up here. Just open that door and have a seat. There's a microphone that's to your left on the stick. Pick the base of that up and place it in your lap so you can speak directly into that first. Okay? Try not to get too close. The microphone is very sensitive. You may be hearing you ready. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Mosley, could you please state your full name, spelling first and last? Uh, Aaron Mosley. A A R O N Mosley. Thank you, Mr. Mosley. Now, I'm just going to ask you some questions uh, about, about the incident 
in this case. Now, um, did you know our fellow Malik Muhammad? Yes. And uh, what name did you know Mr. Muhammad by? Fellow Malik. Oh, fellow? Uh, and Malik. And Malik. Now, uh, how did you know uh, Mr. Muhammad? Uh, actually, um, about five, six years ago, uh, I re uh, reunited with my cousin, Hyra. Okay. Uh, I guess yeah. you and her husband did what? We created a bond. A bond. Yeah. And, and Mr. Mosey, I'll just ask you to speak up as much as you can. Thanks a lot. Now, uh, and so how did you know Kyra? That's my husband. Your husband? Okay. Second husband. All right. And uh, would you say you were close to, I'll refer to him as a Would you say you were close to the fellow? Yes. Yeah. And uh, about how how often did you happen to see Phil? Uh, pretty much all the time, right? And uh, and then so obviously he passed away, right? Uh, so I'm going to ask you about that day. On that particular day, were, were you with fellow? Yes. And tell me about um, why did you end up meeting up with Phil? Uh, I ended up um, meeting up in a club at night and. Uh, and I gave him a phone call. He got called a telephone for a uh, kind of call that day. Either word, he came down and picked up the phone and uh, uh, asked him to come over to see him. Like we always do. That's right. Okay. And did you know, before I go on, do you know which day this was? The date? Uh, I don't know the exact date, but it was definitely uh, right. Okay. Now, um, and then, so did you end up going over to their place? Yes. And uh, about what time was that? Do you remember? Uh, like two, 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 two. And then, and then, once you got the fellow's place, who was there? Uh, I went to the fellow. They was in the basement. Yeah. And uh, what did you, what did you all do there? Uh, actually, they was already just, just chilling, having a good time, and they uh, were just just down to themselves. Um, Kyra had got a phone call to her dad, and she didn't want to answer the phone, but the uh, fellow was like, I'm going to go to Palm Street here, you know what I'm saying? So. Okay, now let, let me just ask you before we get to that, um, was there any drinking going on? Yeah. Okay. And then had you been drinking when you were at the club? Yes. Um, were you able to tell as far as uh, um, the two individuals? So, start with Fellow. Were you able to tell if he was intoxicated? You know? No, I wasn't. Okay. I'm and then, what I'm about the on the speculation, George? Foundation? Um, I can ask further questions. Um, and how did you conclude that based on what? Based on just, just what he was doing. It was really in the challenge. Okay. Uh, so is it meaner? Is it meaner? Yeah, meaner nature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now you were familiar with uh, fellow, you, you knew him for a long time, you saw him briefly, right? Yeah. Okay. Were you familiar with how he acted when he was not intoxicated? Uh, with that. Okay. And then when, when he had been drinking and was intoxicated, have you ever seen him? Hey, still in the dark. Was there any difference in when Bella was intoxicated and not intoxicated? No. No difference. Okay. okay. Did you see? I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, was you please keep your voice up? No, I, I, I will keep that. I didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't hear it. Okay. So, so Mr. Mosley, um, had you observed uh, fellow drinking? Yes, I did. Okay. And you recall how much? Just if you. And then let's go on to uh, Mrs. Muhammad. Uh, so, and what would you refer to Mrs. Muhammad as? Okay. Uh, as far as her name, like when oh, you talk yeah, Kyra. Kyra. Okay. Early, Kyra. Earlier, Kyra. So, when you uh, did you see Kyra? Yes. And you recall how much? Uh, and, and, and at that point in time, did she appear intoxicated? Was there anything about her that? Here she was intoxicated. Now, um, 
So you said there was uh, there were some phone calls, and then after those phone calls, ultimately, what did you do? I sat on the couch downstairs the basement. And did, did you ever leave the house? Yeah, we ended up leaving all together afterwards. And now we, who is we? Uh, me, fellow, and girl. Okay. And then where did you all go? Uh, went over to the top of the Okay. And uh, is that Beyond Wells? Yes. Okay. And you refer to him as Pops? Uh, that's where everybody from. Um, I know was there. Had you met Pops before this, this day? Yes. And so, would you know him if you saw him today? You recognize him? And you see him in this courtroom? Yeah. And just identify him by an item of his clothing where he is. Let the record reflect that he pointing to the defendant. So moved. And let the record reflect that uh, Mr. Mosley identified him. So, um, so Mr. Mosley, once you got to, uh, to uh, Mr. Wells, House. Um, first of all, do you know where that is? Where the house is? Uh, I know it's on uh, Side Street, Balfour. Okay. Mr. Mosley, this one you would have been marked as people's proposed three and four. Can you just take a look at those. All right. So people's exhibit three, what is that? So, so Mr. Wells House? Okay. And then people's four, what is that? Wells House. Okay. Now uh, looking at those photos, does that help uh, reflect your recollection of the address? Yes. Okay, what's the address? Uh, one last seven seven zero. Okay. And what street? Warming. Okay. Thank you. And do you, can you tell us what city and state? Uh, I don't know if that's Detroit or Harper Woods or. Do you know the county then? Wait, I guess I already don't know. Okay. No problem. Just one second. Just one And your honor, I believe there's a stipulation that uh, the residence at 19770 McCormick is in the city of Detroit, County of Wayne, State of Michigan. So stipulated, Mr. Johnson. So stipulated. So stipulated. So receives that stipulation. Thank you, uh, So, Mr. Mosley, once you got to that residence, um, uh, how did you approach the door? What part, or how did you approach the house? What part of the house did you approach? Uh, front door. Okay. And then, uh, do you knock on the door? No, it was already open. Okay. And then, did anyone meet you there? No. So, what did you do? Just uh, when we entered the house, we just ended up going in the kitchen, have a good time, just some music. Now, uh, when you enter the residence, what's the first room you go into? Oh, the front room. Living room? Okay. And you refer to that to as the front room? Yeah, front room. Okay. And then uh, when you get to the kitchen, is the kitchen the next room or how do you get to the kitchen? It's, you gotta walk to the front. It's uh, to, your, to your right. It's right to your right. Okay. Hey. Okay. And then who was in the kitchen? Uh, Joyce and uh, Wales. Was there anyone else in the house that you saw? No. And uh, so Kyra and Bella were still with. Them. Yes. And then uh, what did what did you all do then? Uh, Sit down with them. Yeah, we just sat down and had a few drinks. This music like you always do. And approximately what time is it now when you get there? Uh, I don't know what time, but it, it was late. It, was, it had to be a party. Now, what was the mood like in the song? Actually, the mood was great, you know, it was okay. Uh, I said, we was actually just having fun, listening some music, enjoying our time, we had a couple drinks, you know, they barred on it and stuff like that. He was cooking chicken. And he, he, Mr. Wallace. Mr. Wells, yeah, he was cooking chicken. So, so. 
Now, and did you all stay in the kitchen the entire time? Uh, not the, not the entire time. I didn't stay in the kitchen the entire time. But I had got intoxicated when I went in front of one of the house for a while. Okay. And do you happen to recall how long you had been there before going to lay down? Uh, at least for a couple of hours, maybe an hour, hour and a half. All right. And uh, was there some point where you had, so were you asleep then in the living room? Yes. And was there some point where you woke up? Yes. And was there anything you noticed when you woke up? Yes. What was that? I heard Kyra uh, throw something down in the kitchen, I jumped up, and uh, I seen they were, you know, random, going back and forth with each other, that argument. Let me, let me just hold, hold, hold you up there. Um, so when you say they, who's they? Uh, Kyra, Bello, Wales, and uh, Joyce. I don't know if Joyce was actually arguing, but she was right in the midst of down uh, humans with each other. Okay. Now, did you actually see all of them? Yes, I did. Okay. So uh, where were they at the time? They was like in the middle part of the kitchen. So did you go into the kitchen then? Yes, I did. All right. And, uh, and so were all of them talking? Yes, they were. And uh, were you able to decipher anything that uh, Mr. Wells said? No, I did not. Okay. Um, and was, was there anything you would, uh, I guess, say was arguing? Was there arguing? I don't, I don't know exactly what they were arguing about, but it seemed like it was serious, but it was like the norm. You know that they do at times. Now I, I think nothing of it. You know, uh, um, you know, like in the series. You know, I've seen that happen before, so I didn't be bother. You know, to even jump in the conversation. Our voices elevated. Yeah. Um. Now, did everybody stay in the kitchen the whole time? No. Okay. So what? <coughs> what happened? Who left? Uh. It was. It was Kyra. Wales, the choice. Yeah. And so, uh, Mr. Muhammad and Muhammad, I'm sorry. Oh, they they all, all left. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and where did you see them? Uh, they they ran the storm to the front, and and I heard the door open, and they went outside. Okay. Now, uh, so you saw them leave the kitchen area, yes. right? Okay. Could you see the, the front door from where you were? No, I actually went in the middle part of the kitchen. The the kitchen. Okay. So, all right, and then you heard the, the front door. Open. Yes. Right. Um, did you get you know move yourself so that you could actually see the, the front door at any time? No. Okay. And uh, was there anything else that would suggest to you who actually went outside? Uh, I, I know that they all had run outside or footsteps. And, you know, they just ran outside. It was, it was a norm that they always go outside. Okay. Um, and then, so while they were outside, did you ever move from where you were? No. Did you hear, uh, Rio still hear their voices? Yes. And whose voices did you hear? Uh, I heard the low voice, the little voice. And did you hear what they were saying? I uh, did again with the voices elevated, anything like that. You can just yes, it was loud. And uh, did you hear uh, Joyce and or Kyra? I really can't really hear their they voices. I just heard them too. Like most. All right. And uh, was there anything else that you that you can say you heard? Oh, uh, gunshots. Gunshots. Yes. Okay. Uh, approximately how long had they been out of the kitchen before you heard the gunshots? Uh, I'm like. Maybe a minute or And how many gunshots did you hear, if you remember? Like two or three. And then what happened after that? Uh, actually, I heard them come back in the house uh, yelling. And uh, all I could hear is, you know, the last words, the fellow saying, stop pointing that gun in my face. You're going to kill me, kill me. Okay. Now, but the voices that you heard, so uh, when they came inside, who were those voices? Fellows. Okay. Uh, did you hear anybody else's voice? I can hear him yelling. Now him being who? 
Well, okay. And could you make out what he was saying? I can't, can't remember what he was saying. Just, just yelling and stuff. All right. Now, could you see anybody in the um, but you could recognize Mr. Wells' voice. Yes. And uh, was it something about the voice? What was different about the voice that you could tell he was, he was at that point in time inside the house? That, you know, when when he asked me, uh, when I heard Della say that part, he, he yelled, ah! You know what I'm saying? I, I know that. I know that voice. Who um, yelled that? Wells. And then did you uh, hear Tyra or Joyce at that time? Yes, they did. Yes, okay. Now, all right. And then so after you, so when, again, did you hear Fellow say? I heard him say that. I heard him say that. What again did he say? He said, stop pointing that gun on my face. I'm going to kill me, kill me. And then what did you I heard the two shots after that. And uh, what did you do? I, I ran in the front room and I noticed that Wells was gone. Kyra was actually um, pumping Bellow, trying, trying to bring him back. She had shot. We all were shot at that moment. Okay. Now, if, if you don't recall, that's fine. Um, but as best you can, do you recall how long it was between you hearing the shots and then you going into the living room? It was like, actually, like immediately. I ran when I ran in. Okay. And did you see Mr. Wells anywhere? No. Was the door open? Yes. Did you look out the door? Yes, I did. Okay. And what was it right when you got into the living room that you looked out the door? No, just yeah. the nature of the Yeah. Sustained regrets. When did you look out the door? I looked out the door when uh, when I actually heard after the gunshot, I ran straight in front. I didn't see him. Wells. And I looked outside, I noticed that the car was on the uh, system. Okay. Now, uh, so when you when you first got into the, the living room, what did you see? I seen Bella on the floor. And then what did you do? Ran to the door. Now, uh, and then after that, what did you do? I ran to the back. I was outside for a while. Just now, when you say back, what do you mean by that? It was, it was a, it was a back, it's a back door, and to the backyard. I was in the backyard for a while. Okay. Now, you previously referred to the kitchen as the back kitchen. Yes. Okay. Is that door it's attached to the back door? The kitchen, the back door. So that's the back door. Okay. All right. Now, uh, are you familiar with the house as far as? Uh, do you know where Mr. Wells' bedroom was in that house? No. And then after, uh, so after you ran outside, what did you do? All right. And did you ever come back to the front of the house? Uh, actually, they would not let us in the house. Before. Okay. And that who was the police? The police ended up coming. Quick. So you were in the back. Until the police arrived, and uh, and then did you happen to speak to the police? No, I did not speak to the police at that time. So we went down to the headquarters. Okay. Uh, at that time, and so while you were outside, did you ever make your way to the front of the house or around? So you're in the back. Of the yes. Time? Uh, did you ever see Mr. Ball in return? No. <laughs> now. Um, at this point in time, so I'm talking about when the shooting occurs. Um, how about how long have you been sleeping? Um, probably like about an hour and a half. And do you, do you remember what time it was when you woke up? No, I remember the time. How did you feel as far as your, your drinking and everything? How did you feel when you woke up? object to the relative church. And it goes to love intoxication. So how did you feel at the time you woke up? Still intoxicated. Do you believe that that affected your ability in any way to recall what happened? Some things, yes. Now, you, you testified to what you recall today. Yes. Is it accurate? Yes. Okay. 
So um, the alcohol you consumed, it didn't distort your memory at all? Uh, yes, it did a little bit at first. It started to remember something, something. But as far as the things that you remember, yeah. you're sure those are correct? Yeah. Nothing further on. Before you do cross, Mr. Jackson, let me check on one thing. Okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. May I help you? Judge, I'm going to Mr. Weiner? Uh, yes, Judge. Um, let me let me give you the case number in case you don't have it. If, um, yes, sir. Are you ready? Yes, sir. 2405601201 FY. It, it should it should come out to a Mr. Hargrove, Amari Hargrove. That's that's what the register of actions showed in and yet, and then when I logged into Judge Sabri, she said she transferred it to you. So all, all I want to do today, Judge King, is I'll waive his appearance and um, just like to set this matter for an exam. That's all. Okay, let me call the case. <laughs> Think Bonds already said. I just, I'll just waive his appearance for this PCC, knowing that he may not be there, and just ask this court to set it down for a problem for a uh, preliminary exam. I have some of the discovery. I'll contact whoever the prosecuting attorney is going to be. I'll, um, could you have them contact me, or I'll find out who, who they are. And that's all. Thank Wait you. This presence continued to plead of not guilty and set this matter for a preliminary examination. The record should reflect that I don't have an assistant prosecuting attorney assigned to the domestic violence unit here with me now, but her doctor is my doctor. So I will set this matter for a preliminary examination on I'll waive the 20 I'll waive the 20 day rule, Judge. March 18th at 11 o'clock. Well, Judge, can we have another date? Um, if it's going to be on a Monday, could we, um, if we could have it on April the 8th, if no, we sir. do it on Monday? No, sir. I'm not going out to April. No. Okay. Um, how about, um, hold on. Uh, how about March, March 22nd? Is your client in custody? He's in custody, yes, sir. So why do you want to go out so far? Because I'm, I'm, jam I'm jammed up 
completely judge with all with hearings and 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 uh, in person matters. I mean that's that that Friday the twenty second is the only time I can get away. I I've I've spoken to him and the family, and I told them that that may happen, and they have no objection. March twenty second at eleven thirty. Okay, thank you. Final be continued. Thank you. Okay, we are back on the record on people versus Leon Wells. Cross examiner, Mr. Johnson. Good morning, Mr. Mosley. Good morning. You gave a statement to the police, correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That was at the police department, correct? Correct. Okay. And that was later that morning, right? Yes. Okay. And were you with the Mohammed? Mohammeds, were you with them at their home when they left there to go to Mukun? Yes. Okay. So you know they had been drinking there, correct? Yes. Okay. And they drank Crown Royal, right? Yes. Okay. And it's been said by Miss Kyra that her and Malik consumed almost a fifth liquor before they even left home. Um, here said we're both of them. Pardon, Jeff. I don't see here, say I'm not. Okay, I'll probably phrase it. Do you know what they were drinking when you, before you left home? Yeah. Okay. Did you see a fish of uh, Crown Royal around the house? No. Okay. Did you see any liquid around the house? Yeah, I saw a little bite. Okay. And, uh, so it was safe to say they were somewhat intoxicated even before they left, right? It was not intoxicated. Well, I'm not asking you to say how intoxicated. My point is, if they were drinking, they they were drinking, correct? Yeah. Okay. I know, Jack, you did answer the question. Right, right. Well, he said they weren't intoxicated. Yeah. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to argue with them. I'm going to say they had been drinking, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You don't know how intoxicated they were, correct? Correct. Okay. Let's talk about what you do know. Um, what you do know is that once the shooting occurred in the house, it was in the house, correct? Yes. And once that occurred, you left out storming through the kitchen because you were upset, correct? Yeah. Okay. And that was immediately after you heard the shooting, and uh, you were you were highly upset, correct? Yeah. Okay. And in fact, you were showing your anger and emotions, and pulled down some pots and pans and stuff, and as you left out the back door, going through the kitchen, correct? Got it out. No, I'm not cutting it out. I'm asking you a question. You say yes or no. no. Okay. Um, so when you went out in the back, you left the scene, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you didn't see what Mr. Wells did right after the shooting, correct? Afraid that. You did not see what Mr. Wells did right after the shooting. Yes right. or no? no? All right. So you couldn't have seen him walk right out of the house and leave the scene. You're not saying that, sir. I got. We can. Can I talk at the same time? I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna be calm. I'm not gonna trick you. Okay. So I give you time, time to respond. 
she has to take down all of this. At the time that you walked out of the house in the backyard with your back turned to the scene immediately after the shooting, you could not have seen what Mr. Wells was doing. Yes or no? No. Okay. And you could not have seen when he walked out of the house. Yes or no? No. You could not see, you did not know when exactly he left the scene, correct? Yes, I do. Well, you didn't see right. him. Did My see question him. is, you did not see him when he left the scene, because you had already left, correct? That's what you just testified. Yes or no? Yes. So, you couldn't have seen, let's talk about what you do know. You don't, you, you never saw him sitting, talking to Kyra in the living room while she was trying to revive Malik. Yes or no? And if he left sometime thereafter, you can't tell us today because you weren't there, correct? Weren't there. Sir, you said you went out in the back, correct? Yeah. And you said you left the scene, yeah. correct? I went outside after the shots. After the shots, I ran into the front of one. I noticed that he was gone. Well, after the shots. Right. Well, you just told us, I'm not going to go back and forth with you, okay? I, you test, I will take your testimony, okay? So, you cannot sit here and tell us what he did immediately after shooting because you did something different, correct? I've already covered that, correct? Yeah. All right. Now, during the evening, you were there and you knew that everybody was drinking, correct? Right? Yeah. And you didn't see any, you didn't know of any bad blood between Malik and Leon because they come there all the time, correct? And something interesting you said, you said when you heard them arguing or screaming or getting loud, that wasn't unusual to you because that's what they do, correct? Okay. And let's dwell on that a little bit. Do you go to, you you travel different locations with uh, Malik and uh, Kyra and go over other parties and come over there and drink and hang out, right? Right. Okay. And you know the temperament of Kyra and Malik, they get to going back and forth. They both get intoxicated, correct? Sometimes. I didn't ask you how many times. I'm just asking you, let's take it one step at a time. First question was, you know they get intoxicated and loud and argue back and forth. Yes or no? No. You don't know that? No. Okay. So they weren't doing that that night? Not amongst each other. Not that I know my that. question is, I tried to get out yeah, My yeah. question is, the witness is trying to answer. He answered, question. Judge. Now I'm going to the next question. You indicated that that night you heard them screaming, hollering, getting loud. You weren't surprised by that, correct? Correct. You've seen them do that on other occasions. Yes, but not amongst mm -hmm. each other. Okay. Husband and wife, no. You've seen them do that at that house, correct? Yes. Okay. And you've seen Mr. Wells ask them to leave the house when they get unruly like that after drinking. No, so I don't know. Okay. Well, let's talk about what you saw that night. Did you hear Mr. Wells while you were walking around all night on the phone? You were on the phone, right? No, I was not on the phone. Oh, okay. so... If it's been said that you were on the phone, that's not true. No. Okay. Okay, that's good. So you weren't drinking, yeah. or were you drinking? I was drinking. Okay. And you weren't talking to a girl on the phone? No. Okay. 
And so you weren't sleeping the whole time, correct? You don't want us to believe that, correct? The whole time. All right. Okay, so you heard them. You heard Mr. Mosley, I mean, Mr. Wells at time ask them to leave the house because they were arguing. Okay. You all arrived here at what time? You arrived at three, or you think you may have arrived? I don't know. What well, then, let, okay, let's slow down. Then. You understand you're under oath, right? Yeah. Okay. If you don't remember, just say, I don't recall. Okay. Don't recall. Okay. So you don't recall whether you arrived here sometime around one o'clock. Okay. okay. So you think that you all came all the way from McCormick to hang out at three in the morning. So if the shooting happened somewhere around five, or six in the morning, you're saying that you all had only been there a couple hours before the shooting occurred. Yes. Okay. You're saying that Miss Wells was up cooking chicken at three in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So what you do know is, do you recall when Mr. Malik was outside and storming around the house, pounding on the windows, kicking on the doors. Was that when you let him back in? Do you recall? So where were you when all this was happening? Well, you weren't in the kitchen all night, right? No, I was not. You were on the couch, right? Yeah. So you never heard Mr. Malik Knocking on the doors, trying to get back in the house? No. You never heard him kicking violently on the doors? Okay. Did you never heard Mr. Wells begging Malik and uh, Kyra to leave and, and for Malik to take Kyra home? No, I don't know, Jack. These are questions that are it's evidence or facts that aren't in evidence. In the way that you're framing the question, there's a some facts not evidence. Judge, you know I cross examine, I'll rephrase the question. So it's your testimony today under oath. You never heard Mr. Wells beg Malik to take his wife home. You never heard him beg Kyra to go home? No. You never heard them at the front door when he told, went out on the porch? No, I mean, again, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Did you ever hear, did you ever hear, did you ever see, oh, did you ever see Mr. Wells, go outside or to the front door while you were there? Did you ever see Mr. Wells go to the front porch in desperation and fire two shots into the air? No, I did not see that. So when you heard he wasn't inside the house, right? He wasn't. He was not. Okay. And Malik was outside, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you ever see them get into a shoving match on the uh, grass? No. Did you ever see and hear him hollering? Malik, come get your wife and take her home? No. Did you ever hear Kyra saying, I'm not leaving, I'm not going home? No. Did you ever hear an argument erupt between Malik and Kyra because she wouldn't leave? No. Did you ever see Malik standing at his car 
Bailey and Kyra to come on and lead. This, at the time that the shooting occurred, it was a lot of excitement, correct? When you first heard the shooting, you were excited, you were upset, and obviously there had been a promotion, correct? There had been a promotion and you were excited and you knew there was some excitement going on at the time you heard the shots, correct? Okay. And during, during that time, you heard Kyra holler to you, it's my fault. You remember that? You didn't tell the police that? So you gave a statement and you saying you remember facts today that you didn't remember back then? Mm -hmm. So you had an opportunity to talk to others about this case, correct? Mm -hmm. You haven't had a chance, you didn't talk to anybody about uh -huh. this case? Yes, yeah. I did. You talked to Kyra, you talked to other people that was involved in this case, right? No. Oh, so Kyra didn't call you? That's all I asked you. So you, you talked to her or you didn't talk to her? Yeah. Talk to her about this case or talk to her? Yeah. Did you talk to her about this case? No. You don't recall Kyra during the time of the excitement when right after the shooting, yelling and telling everybody, don't say nothing about what happened? Objection, Your Honor, is no. both hearsay and it's just, again, it's, it's facts that aren't some excited utterance, Judge. I thought I'd lay, I'll lay it again. Uh, when the shooting happened, there was some commotion, correct? It was a lot of excitement, right? Yeah. That's what you saw. You were upset. You were excited. That's why you went out, right? Yeah. And during that time, right there at, after the shooting, I'm asking you, did you hear Kyra yell to everybody before they got out of the way, don't say anything about what happened? No. Okay. Did you see Kyra move the body from the couch to the floor? No. Did you see Kyra tell or hear Kyra tell Mr. Wells and everybody else, I got this, I got this? No. Okay. So, it's your testimony today that you didn't see the shooting, correct? Correct. You didn't see Mr. Wells and Malik fighting. No. But you were in the kitchen. You were in the house, but you didn't see or hear them fighting. No. But you say you heard a, a sound like a uh. Yeah. But you didn't see what that came from, right? No. But that could be consistent with somebody grunting, fighting, getting struck. Objection, Your Honor, that's speculative. I'm saying it could be consistent, the noise that you heard. It's calling for speculation, Your Honor. Judge, I think it wasn't speculation when he, when he testified to what he heard. I'm not asking him to speculate. He can just tell us what he heard. Right. I'm asking to speculate. He right. said he heard the uh. Okay. You heard the uh. Was it a human up? Uh? Yeah. Okay. What you don't know is where that came from, right? Yeah. I didn't hear you, sir. 
front room. The front room in the house, right? Yes. Right at right at or near the time of the shooting, correct? Yeah. In fact, right before the shooting, correct? After the shooting. Well, you don't after, know. After do you? the shooting. You don't know, do you? It was after the shooting. I said you don't know, really. Do you? Yeah. Ask an answer. He said after the shooting. When, when you heard somebody allegedly say, stop pointing the gun in my face, was that coming from the outside when they were outside? It was on the inside. It was on the inside? But you didn't see that, correct? In fact, you told the police you didn't see anybody with a gun, correct? Correct. Right. You didn't see... Based on what you've said, you didn't see Mr. Wells and Malik arguing, correct? You didn't see them uh, making threats to each other or any bad blood between them at the time that you were around, it, correct? Right. You, you, had, you had no reason to believe that Mr. Uh, Wells had any reason to fight or hurt belief at the time you were there based on what you observed, correct? Correct. Um, you've known Malik and Kyra to get loud and argue. That's the answer. Okay. And you didn't see uh, Mr. Wells with the gun through the night, correct? When you uh, told the police, they asked you where did Leon go, you told the police, I don't know, right? Yeah. And when they asked you, did you try to drive away? I'm sorry. You said, I don't know. Right. <coughs> Uh, you you had no reason to believe that Leon was going to harm his daughter, did you? No. So why did you tell the police that Malik was trying to protect Kyra from his, from the father? Because at that time I was intoxicated and I really at the scene, it seemed like Bello was really, you know, grabbing his wife to get outside. So all that was what you told the police was speculation and was not true, correct? Yeah, true. Well, <coughs> you don't know that he, that he had any reason to try to protect uh, Kyra from her father, right? Objection, that's an answer. I'm just not used to these being objections. Once again, well, let me rephrase the question. 
There was nothing that Leon did that would cause you to believe he was going to harm his daughter, right? They argue sometimes. I just asked a simple question, <coughs> sir. Yes. But when the police asked you, what did you mean by that? You couldn't explain, correct? Just like you can't explain that. Objection, Your Honor. Your questions are calling for speculation. Um, Not this wrong thing. These are these questions that are calling for speculation. Now, it's more argumentative than speculation. You phrase. <laughs> you, you were good friends with Malik? Yes. Okay. And you weren't happy about him getting shot, correct? Correct. And you haven't felt good about it, period, correct? No. And when you came here to testify today, you want this man to be punished for that, correct? Absolutely. And you're, you got a little bit of bias and feelings about this case, correct? Honestly. I don't know, man. Yeah, but I said you still have a little bias. That's normal, correct? Okay. So at the time of the incident, right there at that time, you were upset and you were saying things that you didn't really know to be accurate, correct? No. Well, you said you everything wasn't accurate because you were intoxicated. Everything was is accurate in there um, phrasing some of the things that I have left out. So, and that contains some bias, correct? Nothing further, you redirect just briefly, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Mosley, so uh, as far as what the council referred to as some of this bias, so have you fabricated anything today because of your bias in this case? No. Okay. So what you testified to today is, is accurate as far as what you recall the incident? Yes. Okay, nothing further. Sir, you indicated that you heard Fellow and Mr. Wells arguing, right? You didn't see them arguing, but you heard them arguing. Yes. You recognize both of their voices? Yes. All right. The voices were raised at the time? Yes. Okay. And that arguing that you heard, that took place inside the house? Uh, it was actually outside. It was outside. Yeah, when did they go outside the house? Uh, right, right after I heard um, early. Throw some down in the, in the kitchen. Who threw some down in the kitchen? Kyra. Girl. Okay. Girl. Kyra threw something down in the kitchen. Yes. And this was Mr. Wells' house, right? Yes. Did Mr. Wells appear to be upset about that? Uh, he, was, he, he was just, he was just mad. For whatever reason, I don't know. So, but his argument was with fellow. It wasn't with Kyra. No, not that I know. You say no. Was it Mr. Wells and fellow arguing, or Mr. Wells no. and Kyra arguing, or were they all arguing? It was all arguing. It was all arguing. Yeah. Okay. And you say that you didn't hear Mr. Wells tell them to leave his house? No. What were you upset about? Were you left out? I was hurt that he had got shot. Oh, so upset. that's when you got yeah. upset after, yeah. after the shoot. Yeah, I thought shoot. that was before the shooting no. you had left off. Uh -huh. I was okay. never upset. I was sweet. All right. And I woke up to. So why did you go outside? After the shot, I went outside. 
<laughs> so you were in the house at the time of the shot, just in a different room? Yes, I was in the kitchen. Okay, and then you went outside after the shot, and that's when you were upset? Yes. Okay. You said prior to the shooting, you heard fellows say, stop pointing that gun in my face. If you're going to shoot, shoot me? Kill me. Kill me. All right. How much time passed before he said that and you heard an actual shot? Immediately. Immediately. And you said that you did not see the defendant leave out the house, right? That's because you were outside yourself. No, I went in the back. Actually, I went in the front after the shot, and I noticed that he was gone. Okay. But you said you came back in right after the shots? I was already still in the house. I just went to the front door. After the shots, I ran. I was in the kitchen. So when I heard the shots, I ran in the front. I noticed that Mr. Wells on the ground, uh, Mr. Wells had left, and Bella was on the ground. Tyra was, was on the And this was right after the shots? Yes. <coughs> and he left his own house. Any questions based on my question? Yeah, Judge. Yeah. At the time when the facts were fresh in your mind, when you were at the scene, this is based on my question. Yeah, you never told the police in your statement that you heard them anybody say, "Point, uh, uh, shoot me, shoot me, kill me." You never, if you're gonna shoot me, you never heard, you never made those statements to the police at that time, correct? Correct. I didn't call so, that. So those statements are the first time that you said anything about it, and that's in court, right? No, um, I actually called back to give that testimony back out. That was after after you thought about it, after you left, right? Yeah, I even uh, yeah. thought about it. You know, I was just, yeah. Amen. So you changed your story, right? No, I did not change my story. Well, that was different, right? Because in this statement, when they asked you, is there anything else you want to tell us? And they told you from the beginning, you know, this is an investigation. And if you lie, you're violating the law. They told you that, right? And you knew how important the facts were, right? Yes? Yeah. And you knew if you heard somebody say what you testified today to, that was important, right? Right. One more question. You said to the judge that Malik and Leon were arguing. Isn't it true the only time you heard Leon expressed or get upset was to tell Malik and Kyra to leave his house. No. You never heard that all night. That's the man. Okay. okay. All right. Follow up. So uh, at the time you made your initial statement to the police, uh, again, were you talking at that time? Yeah. Oh. Um, talk to me how many days later did you call the police? Well, um, probably And at that time, what was your what was your state? As far as why? I'm going to object to the relevant yeah. judge. Your Honor, so he had been drinking when he was initially interviewed, and then when he followed up and called the police to just get some additional information, I'm just asking what was his state of that time. Was he still intoxicated? Was he still intoxicated? Oh, okay. uh, so, and uh, so, so uh, do you believe that 
you may have forgotten to mention some things when you give the interview. I'm because gonna the check to yes. need to make sure the questions are answered. Yes, good answers. I think I've heard of that. Thank you, sir. Judge, before the are you saying girly or girly? Girl. Girl. Yeah. You may step down, so you're also thank you. Your Honor, can I have a minute just to check on my other witness? Yes. 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 Thank you, Agent. All right. Uh, people call Kyra Muhammad. Please step forward, give your name and spell it to the young lady waving at you. Please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. Thank you. Please have a seat in the witness box next to me. Place up nice and loud. Speaking to that microphone, it'll be to your left. In fact, I want you to you have a seat, pick the base of that up and place it in your lap and speak to that for us, okay? You may begin when you're ready. Thank you, Judge. And this mom is, yeah, trying to keep it as close to your mouth as possible. So here you go. Thank you. Um, so, uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, uh, Muhammad. Could you please state your full name, spelling first and last? I'm Sorry. I'm Yeah. And then, could you please spell Kyra? K I R A. And then, Muhammad? M U. H A N M A D. Thank you. Now, um, I know it's difficult for you to be here. I'm um, just going to ask you some questions about passing your husband. I know this is difficult. Just take your time. Take your time answering questions. Okay? If you need a break, let me know. Now, um, so first, just for the record, uh, our fellow Malik Muhammad, he was your husband. Yes. And for how long? How long did you know? And uh, you had children with Mr. Khan? Yes. And what did you call Mr. Khan? What did you refer to him to? Linky. Pardon me? Linky. Linky. Did you ever call him Linky? Yeah. 
George Longfellow. Um, so I'm going to ask you about the last last time you're with uh, Mr. Muhammad. Now, um, so that when you got together with Mr. Muhammad, uh, about when was that? Do you remember? Um, he wanted to get out of the earth and get me out of the earth. It was around maybe 10 p.m. And then, uh, what did you do with uh, Mr. Muhammad once he got home? Um, that, um, I
best for me. That's where you wanted to go. Let's go. Now, um, do you recall about the time that you left approximately? Um, it was after Aaron actually came and was, um, I know he told me that he had left the car. Let me so, just ask you this. Did you recall whether it was before midnight or after midnight? It was definitely after midnight. Okay. The exact time you don't recall? No. Okay, good enough. Um, and then who? So, and then who drove actually to to your house? And then who was with you? So it was you, Leek, and then was Mr. Mosley with you too. Sorry, yes. Darren. With you. Yes. Um, and then uh, did you ultimately then get to your dad's house? Yes. And do you recall the address that your dad lived at? Okay. Now, uh, when you got to that house, uh, what did you do? Um, and do you recall? Do you recall where you entered the the, the house? Um, and was it through the front door then? Yes. Did you have to get someone's attention to let you in, or how did you? How that go? Um, so, and, and do, you, do you recall for sure that the door was closed? Um, I think it's all for sure. I'm sure it's closed. Okay. Did anybody meet you there then? Um, as if someone else comes to the house. Did someone meet you at the door from the inside the house? Yes. Who was that? Um, I can't recall. Was it, do you remember if it was male or female? Okay, uh, so then uh, you eventually went inside the house, is that right? Yes. And then who was there? Um, and then your Joyce, sorry. And then Joyce is how is she related to you? Is she related to you? Um, not your mom. No. And then, uh, so where where did you meet them? Um, and uh, what what type of room is it from? Yeah. And then did you stay in the living room? No, we went to the back where um, we usually sit at where you play in the kitchen. Okay. And uh, what were what, what did you do once you were inside? Um, I saw the day that Aaron was home. Sitting in our home. He said, um, it was looking like he threw some kiss and pulled out. Get to shake it up. And then what did he do? She comes back, so we got a meeting with her. Talking about your dad? Yes. Then did he, did he go and make some chicken then? Uh, yeah. And uh, was there drinking? Was there any alcohol there? Yes. Were you consuming alcohol? <coughs> yes. And then what about everybody else? So when they, when they drink? Mm -hmm. And then what about Aaron? Mm -hmm. And then just say yes. Yes. Or no. Yes. And then uh, what about the dad? Were you drinking? Yes. And then what about? The yes. Uh, so everybody was drinking. Um, now, uh, how, how was, how was the mood at that point in time? At some point, uh, was, was there any change to that? Um, once it started getting late, um, I was ready to go home. I know that I had to do that trip work early. And did you tell anybody that? Just me. And well, what was his response? Um, we got into an altercation. Now, an altercation, is that just arguing or was it? Okay. Did it ever get physical between you and the league? No. Okay. And uh, 
Did anyone else get involved in that argument? Uh, well, my dad told me that down. And your dad told you to calm down? Oh. Okay. And then did, didn't we respond to that? Um, did did the two your dad and Lee did they ever argue? Okay. And then uh, where where is all this taking place? Um, in a bed, the kitchen. Okay, so you're still in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. okay. Now while this argument is taking place, who else is in the kitchen? Um, Jesse. So, uh, so so where is Joyce? Do you know? Um, she Okay. And then what about Aaron? Do you know where Aaron was? <laughs> and then specifically, do you know the room that he's on the couch? Oh, yeah. Now, um, let me ask you this. So, so you come in the front door and that's the living room, correct? Okay. And then you said uh, you go back, that, that's the kitchen. Um, how is the living room separated from the kitchen? Is there a door there? Um, no. No door? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is any part of the kitchen and the living room separated by a wall? Yes. So can you be in, in one area? Can you be in one area of the kitchen and not be able to see into the living room? Now, uh, so did you? So, so, so you and uh, so it's you, um, Lee, and your dad in the kitchen. Uh, did you ever leave the kitchen? Let me ask you this: Did any either of the three of you leave the kitchen? Something. Yes. And who, who is that? Who left? Um, all three. And where did you go? Um, to um, the bedroom. Well, Malik and Dad walked Okay. And do you know where Malik was when he went into the bedroom? He was walking outside. Okay. Now, uh, you said the bedroom. Who's bedroom? Um, Dad. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, when you go to the bedroom, um, how do you get there from the kitchen? Um, well, from where we're sitting, um, you just walk straight, and then you have the turns are right, and then you turn to the bedroom. The bedroom is closest to the bathroom. Now, do you walk into the living room before going to the to the bedroom? Okay. So when you left the kitchen with your dad, you went into the living room first. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And then after that, went into your dad's bed? Yes. Okay. What happened in your dad's bed? Um, he had out a lunch pot. Which is the lunch box that I gave him that belongs to my oldest daughter. Who put on the lunch box? Um, my dad. Um, he put out the lunch box, he unzipped it, and he put out a handgun. And then, are you able to describe what kind of handgun it was? And, and not not a rifle, correct? It was a handgun. No, it was a lunch box. Oh, this one. That's a lunch box that pulled out. Yeah, yes. Right. Now, uh, so after he pulled out that gun, what did you see your dad do? Oh. Um, 
And what part of the gun? If you There's the handle and then and then there's the, the top of the gun. Yeah. Which part of the gun? Um, the bottom part. The handle? Yeah. Okay. And then what did he do? He proceeded to walk up from the bare room into the living room and he was yelling at me, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. <laughs> and then uh did you see him do anything? Yeah. What did you see him do? Shot for the moment. That's it, that. <coughs> yes. Um, did you see the leak at the time? No, it was dark. I was happy. Okay. Um, did you know where the leak was? No. As far as was he inside the house? No, it was on the house. And so, uh, was your dad shooting towards the outside of the house then? And where was your dad at the time you shoot? Uh, he was standing closer to the door, holding the gate open, closer to the door. When he shot, I seen some fire from the gun. And was your dad on the outside of the house then? The inside. And uh, what did you do when you saw him shoot? Right. Where did you run? First, the back of the house. Now, when you uh, run to the back of the house, uh, do you go through the kitchen? Yeah, in the kitchen. All right. And then there's a, there's a doorway at the back of the kitchen that goes outside? Yes. Is that where you went? No, I was in the kitchen. I can't remember if I stepped out here or not. I was just, um, you know, I was shrinking. So I can't remember my every step where that I stepped like that or not. I just know I was scared. And then what uh, did you, did you hear anything once you were in the kitchen? Did you hear anything as far as what was going on outside? No. Could, could you hear Malik or your dad at that time? Did you hear the voices? No, I was freaking myself. So no, I was panicking. Did, did those gunshots, so, so the, the gunshots you saw your dad shoot, did they stop? You saw at some point. And how long? How long between? What was the gap between the two series of shots? In terms of time. And then after you heard those that second series of shots, what did you do? When it sounded like it stopped, came back to uh, the living room area. What did you see in the living room? Just as best as you can recall. Uh, Did you see Malik? I see him. And where was Malik? I'm going to check the information question, Charles. 
Go ahead. And where, where was where was it? Um, walking back into the door of the house. And then did you also see your father? Yes. And where was your father? Coming back in the house. And uh, what, what happened? What did you see happen? Um, I see this expression on the face. Can you describe the expression yourself? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a blank stare. It was like a blank stare. Like his eyes big. He was just big blink. It was just like a blank stare. And what happened? I see the blood come from his bones. Both of them not true. And what happened? He fell to the ground. Okay. At this point in time, uh, what was your dad doing? Can't I was just focused on um his shot. And uh but uh did you see your dad? So at any point after that, after seeing we call the ground, did you see your dad at all after that? It was so bad. It was so fast. Once I seen that, that's all I just pay attention to. Um what did you so, so what did you do at that point once your your husband? Um screen for Joyce. Screen for Joyce. And then did, did Joyce Joyce come? I remember I had my phone. But I had my phone I called her and I don't know what she gave it to me. Aaron gave it to I don't remember if I just remember still her. And then um, when you were on the phone with 911, um, did you do anything at the time to help me? Yeah. What was that? <laughs> and um, we're gonna we're gonna skip ahead. So uh, you called 911. Did anybody respond? Did you see police that, that evening? Yes. And were, were there medics that also arrived? Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I was just on top of them. They told me to move back. They just pushed up to the kitchen area to that fresh air. And then um, did you remain at the house? Uh, well, Sorry, how much how long did you remain in the house? And then uh, when you ultimately left the police, left, left the house, uh, where did you go? Um, that's a police headquarters. Yes. Okay. Now, um, so so the time period you were waiting at the house, did you ever see your dad come back? No. Um, and just uh, when was uh? When was the next time that you heard from your dad? Um, and how did you hear from your dad? Um, by, um, um, yeah. And who called, who, who called who? I know. I know. 
So you got the call? Okay. And then did you answer the call? So yes? Yes. And uh, did you recognize the voice on the other end then? Yes. And who was it? And then uh, what, did, what did your dad say in that phone call? Did he say anything else? I don't know what to do. Say anything else? That you that you remember. If you don't remember anything else, that's fine. Or anything else that your dad says? Um, I don't want to be so at the time to me it's a different phone call that I had from but I know he asked me um, um, when he said he don't know what to do and then um, he gave me Joyce's number I was supposed to call Joyce and talk to her. And did he say why? To see if she knows what was going on. Did he say what he meant by what was going on? Um, well, basically, I told him what was going on. That's all I wanted to have her call me. She called me. Um, she did call me. When she called me, um, I was at my granny's house. I told her that my family just walked in and I told her that. But I never did speak to her after that. I told her one other time that when I was getting my car. Now, now let, let me ask you was there a time after that that you had another phone call with your dad? Now, was there a phone call that was, you ended up reporting with your dad? Yes. Was it that next call? Yes. Now, um, how did you record the call? Um, with my other cell phone. Okay. And uh, what was the reason for you reporting? Already running, and I knew they would turn themselves in. Deserve justice. Now, um, you ended up turning that phone call over to the police, right? Mm -hmm. And then you had an opportunity to, to listen to that call uh, mm -hmm. prior to testifying. And what you heard. Was that a true and accurate representation of that call that you had? With you? You know, what was that, that recording that you heard? Mm -hmm. Did that sound the same as the actual call that you had with your dad? Absolutely. Yes. He would offer evidence. Uh, what's been marked as. Uh, People's proposed exhibit 14. Any objection? Jack, I don't know that we have that call. You said it's in the link, but I can't go by that because we didn't get we didn't get statements to any of these witnesses until 4:30 last night when I called and said, where are our statements? Then I didn't get the Kyra's long statement long to long five. Long. Nine minutes. You want to take out two minutes? Yeah, I'm just. We'll have a question. 
Um, do you want to go out outside? No, and I called the prosecutor last night professionally in courtesy and said, what are you presenting today? What are your witnesses? What are your statements? And he could have said that. All right. So, first on the record, my understanding is that this recording is included in the evidence.com that we sent to counsel. I mean, regardless of all that, he hasn't heard it. He has an opportunity to hear it now. All right. So go ahead and do that. Do you have my parties going in the case here? Yes. Where is my parties? You want me to call? Yeah. I just want to know how many of you Oh, okay. Do you know how many of you are in the case? I don't know.
And you're going to have to take that off your head. Me, because Thank you. 
Let's hear. Yes, Ready? Yeah. Ready for the film. Thank you. Okay. 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 We are back on the record on case two four five five six seven seven people versus the nine zero. Last night, trust we had an opportunity to. Review the audio recording? Yes, Sean. Okay, we're ready to proceed now. Yes, Sean. Okay. So, again, you're on people offering the evidence, people's exhibit. Fourteen. Any objection? No objection. Admit. And permission to publish, Sean? Yes. Oh, I. Uh, and the court <coughs> let me back in with the So much, just so worried. Say 
What's your plan? What's your plans? Or do you uh, have, I said, what's your plans? Do you have plans? What's your... I don't know. I don't know really. You know, I ain't been getting no. You know, nobody ain't been really telling me no good advice, so I really don't know. Because nobody been telling me no good advice, and I don't know what's going on, so I don't know. <laughs> you know, everybody just saying little things, you know. You know, um, just, you know, and I don't know, I don't know which way to go, because I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I, I don't know how to go, I don't know how to do that, I don't know. You ain't asked Earl? Girl ain't, girl ain't tell me nothing. No, I, 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 I asked him, and he talked about advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was like, he said, he just, he's telling me that he just don't know yet. He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know yet. You know, everybody, you know, you know, I don't want to mess with, um, you know, I don't want to mess with Tanya, none of them. You know, so I ain't been messing with none of them. So, you know, I'm saying, I don't, I don't know, because I, I definitely ain't mess with them. You know, uh, and I, I, I can't take no advice from Joyce because I don't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I shit, that's on skill step. Hey, okay. I don't know what my plan is. <laughs> what you think I should do? It's going to be hard to run forever. Uh, it's going to be hard to run forever. I know. So they are looking for me, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, because my thing is, I've been, I've, been over to the, I've been over to the house. I walk around the house. I've been, I've been walking around here, and I said I don't know yet, you know, and I don't know, I don't know if they're looking for me or not. They, they didn't call nobody. They didn't call nobody. They didn't, you know. But Joyce don't got her phone back though, either. I ain't got mine back neither. Did you? I thought they gave your phone with your car. I was um supposed to get it, but they was closed by the time I finished doing what I was doing with my car. Yeah, when I went up there today. It was too late, so I gotta go tomorrow. Oh wow! Yeah, I thought they gave you us back. I thought they gave you us. I thought they gave you us back. I didn't get hers back, and she was worried because she was like, "Well, you know," she said they gave y'all her her car and all that back. And I was like, "Oh, okay." I said, "Well, they might give yours back the next day." And so she was looking for it, and then, you know, and um. Uh, and uh, and then what's done? Yeah, they have released it, but um, they released it, but like I say, I wasn't able to get up there and go um get it in time. No, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, cause she still waiting on her. Cause she said she heard, she didn't get her back. Yeah, she, she heard that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, because yeah, that's what I'm really, um, you know, my plan B, you know, my plan B come in, you know, when I see what's going on, because, you know, because right now, I don't know, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know if they got a warrant or what out for me, I don't know. So, I don't, I don't know any of that. You don't say nothing to me. They say nothing. Uh, I said, dang, it ain't nothing to me. They said, did they say anything to Joyce? Nope. 
Nope. They just asked her. They was like, okay, they, uh, they told her, they was like, okay, you know, uh, if you, um, if we, uh, we go, we find out that you're lying, you know, we can lock you up and told her that. Yeah. She told me that, um, she, she, she told me, um, she was asleep. She said, I was asleep and I don't, I don't know. I didn't see anything. And that's, and that's what you call it. And, uh, and they never heard, you know, they, they never alone. They let her out. And they said they'll call it her whole phone. But, you know, I don't know if she, uh, so, uh, they didn't call it yet. You know, so, they, they didn't call it yet. So, I don't know. Yeah, so, I was just what you call it. I had my mind so much. I was like, I want to call her. I said, I don't know. I said, well, I'm going to wait for a couple of days. Then I'm going to call her. I said, I'm going to wait on a couple of days. Then call you. <sighs> yeah. yeah, I'm just sitting back. I'm really, I'm just sitting back. I'm sitting back to because my next move, you know, I was going to head, you know, I was going to head out, but, you know. I mean, I will let you know, and you know, I will keep you informed, or whatever it is, I'm going to keep you informed. No. I'm just waiting right now. I'm just waiting to see what's happening, you know. Is it, you know, is a one issue out, or, you know, what they're looking for me, you know. Because I've been all by the house. I've been, I've been everywhere, you know, because I'm like, I'm like, Damn, if I get caught, you know, it's just, it is, I said, because I can't, I just can't keep hiding. I don't know what they doing, so I can't even no. tell you nothing. No, okay. Okay. Yeah, my plan, my plan B. You know, I will, I will let you, I will let you know. I will let you know what's going on. You know, God's thought just to see how you doing right now. Feeling like shit. Feeling like shit, man. Uh, Feeling like shit. And it's a hard pill to swallow. Mm. No. <sighs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's all I do. You sit on the get my thoughts together. That's all I can do. Mm. See, they're drinking this wine. This wine ain't doing shit. This wine ain't doing shit. <laughs> I don't know yet, but I'm going to keep you in contact. I'm going to keep you in contact. I'm going to keep you in contact. You know, but, you know, if anything that you hear, you know, call me and let me know if I can think about my plan for you, okay? Okay. <sighs> All right, baby, you take it easy. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Miss Muhammad, you, you were able to hear that. And that, and, and that was the, the phone call that you had with your dad. Yes. And uh, if you can recall approximately how many days after after your husband was did that phone call happen? Would it have been within a week? Yes. Now um just going to ask you about you said that after you wait around the house um you're you went to the police headquarters is that correct right and then did, did the police talk to you about what happened at the police headquarters 
Now, at that point in time, uh, how did you feel? Yeah. Nervous. 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 And then you had been drinking that day as well, is that right? Yes. Did you feel as you were still under the influence of that alcohol? Yes. Now, did that affect you at all in what you told the police? Yes. Um, now, after that, and just approximately, if you remember, approximately how long after the incident did that interview take place? It was more time, so... Now, um, and just for the record, do you remember the specific date that your husband was shot? If, if not, that's fine. And that's this year, 2024. And do you recall approximately the time? Um, was it was it that morning, the twenty seventh? Yes. Now, um, did you get a chance to talk to the police after that first time? Yes. And how many days after did you talk to the police again? Now, um, at that point in time, how did you feel? What about alcohol? Did you have any alcohol to drink that day? No. So did you feel like you had a clear head? <laughs> Now, was there anything that you testified to today that was different from what you told the police that, that second time about? Do you remember the second time you talked to police telling them that when, after you heard the shots, you went into the living room and saw your, your husband on the ground? Do you remember telling you Judge, that? I'm going to object to leaving you. You need some pressure with the election or something, but you can't just tell the facts. It's the same. Um, Judge, he has, she has, he has to lay a foundation. First, she has to say she needs her, her uh, needs to be refreshed. I need to do that here on the phone. So, uh, Ms. Muhammad, you're having trouble remembering what you said at the your, your last interview. Is that correct? Yes. Now, uh, you, there was a statement written out reflecting what you told the police when you were interviewed, correct? Yes. Would that help refresh your memory if you looked at that reading? Yes. Okay. Now you're on. Gonna refer you to uh, 
five lines down. For the record, this is the second page. Just read the next sentence. Two lines. We read you. Can I help you refresh your memory as far as what you told the police? Yes. So after uh, remembering that, I'll ask the same question. Was, was there something you told the police that was inconsistent with what you testified to today? Yes. Okay, what's that? Um, when I heard the gunshots, I was in the kitchen. heard the gunshots. I was in the room. Uh, well, no, he was coming out of the room. He was going to sort of sit down and he was shooting. And then that's when I went back to the kitchen. And when you say he was shooting, who was that? Um, yeah, he was shooting. Okay. And I went to the kitchen and I framed him. And then I heard some more shots. And I came back. Then that's when I seen him. And then I was coming into the house. Okay. And did you tell police the same thing? Yes. Okay, what did you tell police? Um that he's in school for now. Yeah. Okay. He's uh um, he's in school for now. And did you tell police whether your dad was there or not? Uh, I'm telling James. Uh, now, so was was that correct? Was just explain that. Why, why did you tell the police that uh, your dad was on? Let me ask you this. Okay. Give you some. But you testified today. Is that accurate? Is that what actually happened? Yeah. That's what you actually saw. Yes. But you made a mistake when you got the paper. I'm object to it. Based on that, you got it wrong. But, but let me ask you again what, what, what was the reason? Can you think of a reason as to why you said something different? I'm still trying to figure out. I'm still trying to think of it together. I'm still trying to do it right now. But what you're testifying to today is that not absolutely. And then uh, going back to that second, the second time you talked to police, uh, how did that come about? Did you contact them, or did they contact you? That's it. And why was that? Because the first was someone false. Okay. And why was the first statement false? Because I was afraid. I was scared of my dad. He was still one of them. Me and my shirt. That's all. Thank you. So, good afternoon, Ms. Mohammed. You understand uh, 
Oh, you gave me. Oh, you gave a video statement. That too, please. You were, oh, you were being video? Yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah. Okay. Prosecutor never was kind enough to show you your video before you took that stand? Yes, but I love you. Okay, so you've seen your video? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And would you agree that you were highly intoxicated at that time, correct? Yes or no? We've got a lot to cover, so we can move. Yes. You were highly intoxicated, yes? yes? Okay. And in fact, you told the police a lot during that time, correct? At the police station when they asked you to talk to them, correct? Yes. Police were nice to you, they were kind, they uh, were trying to help you, and you were very offensive, combative, correct? I don't know. You said you saw the video. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You recall tipping over the table in the end of the world? He showed me half a foot. He showed me the video when I walked away. I'm saying, so I'm asking you, do you no. recall lifting up the table, throwing it over? Do you? Well, let me let me just go through this. Maybe I can help you a little bit. <laughs> Let's talk about your video statement. That's the first statement you gave, correct? Yes. The first statement you gave was to the was to the police at the police department, correct? Right. Second statement you gave after you had a chance to think about it, talk to everybody, you came back five days later and gave another statement, correct? Yes or no? Correct. Your Honor, there's a lot in that statement. What part is she answering? Judge, I just question has Two, two or three different questions. Judge, that is not a legal no, objection. No, I just no, asked her, did she? That's not a legal objection. I just asked, did she make another statement? So, the statement you made on video, the videos don't lie. Then the second statement that you made some days later after you thought about it, correct? The state, okay. And then the statement that you made today on the stand under oath, correct? Right. And then the statement that you just made to the prosecutor after he asked you about the statement, correct? So that's in court under oath, correct? Right. Okay, let's talk about those. When you talked to the police, you told them at the station, the police told you how important it was for you to give them the facts that occurred at that time, correct? Right. And they even told you that they had done your investigation. They told you they were talking to other officers. I mean, other people, other individuals that were involved there at the same time, and please give them the truth, correct? Yes. I'm just paraphrasing. That's what they told you, right? They want you knew that they wanted the truth, yes or no? Yes. They were begging you to give them the facts as you saw them, correct? Yeah. Well, what were they doing? They didn't, the police, this officer in charge, his other officers, they sent two or three officers in there with you being very kind, telling you why it was important, calming you down, talking to you. Is there a question? In there? Yeah. 
You remember that? Yes. Okay. So you knew that they needed the facts and needed the truth then, correct? Yeah. I'm going to object because okay. that has an answer. She never answered, Judge. I'm going to move she on. I'm going to just move on, Judge. I'm going to move on. It's not that important. So you told the police at that time that you had been drinking and that you and your husband had had a fifth at the house before you left the house that you all were drinking from, correct? Right. You told them that even in the car you had a little drink on the way there, correct? Correct. Right. You told them that when you got to the house, you all were drinking shots all night and, and dancing and listening to music and things of that sort, correct? That's correct. Right. Okay. So, so when you were at the house and communicating with uh, Malik, your husband, um, you You all were going back and forth at times with each other, correct? Right. Okay. And at some point, you all argued, right? For whatever reason, you all got an argument, right? right. With you all, Your Honor. Your husband and you, all, you, correct? <clears throat> okay. And You told the police that, you know, and I'm just going through a few things. You can answer yes or no, okay? So we can move through it quickly. You said that uh, you came out the living room talking shit to him, me and Malik, correct? Okay, you can say yes or no, or I don't even know. Judge, judge, I'm just going to tell her how I'm moving through. You can say yes, no, or I don't recall. Okay, so sure, I'm, I'm going to object to that. If she can answer the question. Council can't tell her how to answer the question. Don't judge. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep on moving. You said that you you see you seen him already on the floor. You call that? That's what the statement is. No, I'm talking about what the video, what you told the police in the video. I don't recall. You okay. I was trying to get intoxicated, and I was. I don't recall. Okay. You tell the police, what the fuck? You see no one come in the room or go out the room, in the living room. You recall that? No. Okay. So you're vacillating and you won't tell the police at the time whether anybody else was in the room when the shooting occurred or anything of that sort. They try to get you to talk about that. You don't tell them. You keep saying you, you, don't, you don't know that anybody was in the room at the time. You recall that? You, you told them that you didn't see your husband with the gun and you didn't see anybody with the gun. You remember that? Yes. You said your dad was sitting in the room by the deep freeze, correct? Correct. Okay. So at the time that you were at the police department, you never told them that you saw your dad shoot 
Malik correct? Yes or no? I'd like to keep moving. Yes or no? Do you remember ever telling the police when you were at the police department of one that your dad shot your Malik? Yes or no? Yes. So that's a lie, right? No, he did shoot me. The question was, you never said that at the police department on video, correct? Yes, I got the question. Yeah, answer the question. She said she did. Judge, it's impeachment. She she just lied, and I'm giving her a chance to. We can't. Well, answer the question. Okay, I'm move on. I'm move on. For the record, counsel needs to establish it's a lie. If you play, you play the video of the actual interrogation. Thanks for the thanks for the lesson. Thanks for the lesson in law. You say that you never sat down in the house, correct? You were pacing the floor, moving around, correct? Sounds like you want me to lie. I told you I was a tax day. I do not remember. I cannot tell you about you. Well, I'm just I'm just asking you about questions about what you told the police. And I told you that it was false, my first statement. That's why I went back. So I can tell you. Yeah, but I can still ask you questions. Okay. About and I don't know. So I said, say yes or no, and okay. I don't know. Okay. So you telling the police, you know, you weren't paying attention to what was going on. Uh, you never sat down when you were drinking. Your father was sitting down. You don't recall your father going around intimidating Malik that night, correct? Correct. Right. You don't know that any reason why your dad should want to shoot and kill Malik prior to the shooting, correct? Not correct. Well, you weren't telling your father to leave Malik alone, correct? In fact, leave him alone when? Period, during that night. That was the argument between me and my husband. Right. Your husband had no beef with Mr. Wells until Mr. Wells started asking you and your husband to leave the house because you were arguing and making noise, correct? My dad never told me that. So your testimony today under oath that your father didn't ask you to leave that house at least 40 or 50 times that morning. Yes or no? I don't know. Okay. I was with my dad. I was on. I was, I was with him. He was telling Malik to calm down. Thank you. So you were with your dad. Your dad was fine, right? So why would he tell me? My that? question is, your dad was just fine, right? Yes. So why would he tell me? And it was your dad's house, right? Yeah. But why would he and tell you me? all came to his house, Absolutely. and like you all do, not only that night but other nights. Even at other places, people's homes, you and Malik started arguing. It was late, and you wouldn't leave. Correct? No, is this like closing argument? No, that's okay. not right. And so Malik was outside. Malik left. So what do you mean? So let's talk about that. Malik went outside at some point. Correct? Correct. Right. Okay, and that's because your father kept asking him to leave. He left and he started asking you to come out and leave. Right? Who? You. Who was asking me to come out? Your husband. I thought you said my dad told me to leave. Your dad did tell you to leave. Okay. Do I you recall you. that? Your dad asked you to leave. You said he did, but your dad asked you to leave at least 40 times, correct? 
I do not remember, but I know that he didn't tell me to leave no 40, 50 times like we wasn't invited over there. How many times did he ask you to leave? I don't I passed an answer. Okay. I'm going to move on. So when you and the league start arguing, it was early in the morning, correct? Three, four o'clock in the morning? Do you recall he kept begging Malik to leave because he said that he didn't want a problem of getting put out and they were, you all were making too much noise? You don't recall that? No. Okay. Do you recall uh, your dad kind of moving Malik towards the front door and Malik went outside, stood between his car with the car door open? begging you to come on and let's go home? Do you recall that? Yes or no? No. Do you recall that you hollered back in Malik, I'm not going home, I'm coming, going back into the house? Do you recall that? Yes or no? I recall something like that in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay, so you don't recall outside? I don't recall. Do you recall Malik and your dad getting into a little shelving and pushing? And mind you, other witnesses saw it. Did you recall? Mr. Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry. Do you recall that Malik and your dad got into a little shelving match on the grass? No. Okay. Do you you that home is located in the red zone, correct? You know what the red zone is? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to show why it's relevant. The red zone, they have the shot spotters over there. You know that? Hey, Mr. Johnson, okay. man, you, are, you are not a witness. You have to ask questions. Judge, sure. I'm just asking, is she aware? Are you aware that they have a shot? No. Okay. So, do you recall things getting so bad with you not leaving, asking Malik to leave, that your dad went to the front door and actually shot <coughs> shots in the air. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And do you know why he did that? Did you ever ask him or did you figure it out? No. Because he wanted to, you didn't know that he did that because he wanted the police to come? No. Okay. Did the police come? Sorry. Mr. Johnson, not, not start talking. <laughs> you have to stop. Okay. Yeah. Did the police come? Do you recall? No. Yeah. Okay. So what you do know is that with all that commotion and trying to leave or get you all to leave, you didn't leave, correct? You remember that, right? You never tried to get me to leave. But you never left before the shooting, correct? Right. Okay. And even after he fired the two shots, do you recall that you came back, you were in the house, and Malik was actually outside going around the house, knocking on windows, kicked on the front doors, and things of that sort. You recall that? Yeah. And you recall him getting back in the house? No. Yeah. You recall the police asking you did you call 911 and you told them no? But you told the police you didn't call 911 when they were trying to find out what was going on. You recall that? No. You recall that when they asked you 
What did you do when the police showed up? You told them, I don't know, but I'm not a liar. <coughs> You told the police that you don't know what happened at the scene when the police showed up, but you're not alive. Do you remember saying that? I said that. I don't know if I said it again. You told him, uh, I don't know what happened. No one was arguing with my husband. That's what you told him, right? I know. When you said no one was arguing but me and him, correct? That's the truth. And you never saw your dad argue with Malik, correct? I never seen him. <coughs> seen him to put him out. Oh, you see him trying to put him out, and you see him. You had to hear him tell him to leave, right? Right. And I heard. I him, didn't hear Malik say anything back. It takes two. Hours. I didn't ask you that. So I said. Did I hear him argue? I said you answered that. You said no. And you heard your dad asking Malik to leave, correct? Right. Okay. Thank you. And you clearly told the police that. I don't know how he got shot, right? Right. And then you said, I think my dad shot, right? You said my dad is a hot head, right? But he wasn't acting like a hot head that night, right? Yes, he was. He just asked y'all to go home, right? That's all he said. Yes or no? Okay, I'm going to move on. You, you told the police you didn't think Aaron did it, right? So let me let me uh, let me go to another area. Let's let's talk about the truth. You were there, correct? Right. And while you were in the house, when Malik refused to leave. When Malik got back in the house, you were with your dad. You were you were right there, correct? <laughs> Living room, wherever, right? You were there, correct? Okay. Well, my question, more importantly, is you were right near your dad. You were in walking distance, touching distance at times. You could talk to him, correct? Before the shooting, man, when you got yeah. back in the house, right? And since you don't recall the banging and the kicking and the noise that the leak was making, you did evidence. okay. You did not actually see your father get the gun, correct? I see that. Well, the only reason you know what the where the gun was located because you're the one that gave him the lunchbox, correct? That's not true. Originally? That's not true. When you had the gun? That's not true. Oh, that's not true? Okay. And the house is dark, right? No. The house was kind of dark, right? No. Okay. And. Oh, the house be dark when we in the dining room listening to me. Well, 
Ma'am, I'm not going to argue with you, but no, it was not dark. The evidence checks you can say it was dark. So let me check again, sir. Mr. Johnson, you've been practicing law a long time, sir. You know not to assume facts, not in evidence. I don't want you testifying. Let's get the information from the witness. Okay? Mm -hmm. You you're saying that it was not dark to you? No. Okay. So when your dad went in the bedroom to get the gun, what did you see him do? You just said, I had it. No, so no, no. I said you had the gun it. at a prior time. Now, you're the one. Okay, let me break it up. Did you give your dad the lunchbox that the gun was in? You No. Well, you told the police in your statement that it was your daughter's lunchbox. You recall that? Yes. So it was your daughter's lunchbox, correct? Years ago, and I gave it to my dad years ago. So that's okay. why I know exactly what it looks like because I purchased. Yes, and you had that same gun in that lunchbox before when you had possession of that gun. Right? I never had possession of that gun. Okay. I don't even touch guns. Uh, well, you, hey. you told the police another lie when you said that you heard him cop. Well, Judge, I'm I'm calling her a liar, and I, I can know. do that. And that's argumentative. I said you can't. Okay. Did you lie to the police when you told the police that you heard him pop the gun? Yes or no? Was that a lie? That was not a lie. Well, you can't cop a Glock. You have to pull the chain. You didn't hear anything like that, correct? I didn't object, Your Honor. She answered, she answered the question. No. Did you tell the police you heard a young click the gun? I don't know how the gun worked. I seen him putting the thing in a gun. Okay. Show me in your statement, in your second statement, where you told the police when you got it all together and wanted to be truthful. I'm going to show you your statement that I think you read. Show me anything in here where you told the police you saw him load the clip into the gun. It's not in you, right? Tell me that it didn't happen. I didn't ask you that, man. No, it's so not in you. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm okay. just going to ask questions you can answer. Okay? Okay. It's not in you, right? And that's after you had time to reflect, time to think, and you were coming back to the police station to give them more accurate facts, correct? Yes or no? Okay. You don't want to answer your question? Okay, so let's talk about some other real facts. What you do know is when they began to argue, the argue, when they began to go back and forth, believe in your dad, it was about you and him not leaving dad's house. Yes? Objection. Objection. Judge, I'm trying to set the foundation for where the homicide took place. And that's why I brought this back. Okay, I'm tired of hearing. Okay, it's the third time. You recall that you, Malik, and your dad were in the living room, near the living room. Me and my dad walked to the room. Malik walked out the room. Do you recall that Malik? Swung on your dad, hitting him two or three times. Your dad fell. But most importantly, do you recall jumping on your dad's back? Yes Objection. or no? Objection, Your Honor. This was already covered. Before. This has never been whether covered. She, whether she, she saw a fight. This has never been covered. And now he's just rephrasing the same question. This has never been covered. I've never oh, asked. This is a compound question. Let's do, How, time. do you recall them fighting in the living room? No. Oh. 
Do you recall why your dad had had your uh, Mr. Whip, while your dad was on the floor and Malik was on top loading up that you jumped on Malik's back. You recall that? No. So you're saying under oath that never happened? I didn't say that. I said no. Did it happen or not? Yeah, yeah, answer uh, judge, between you and him saying it's a it's a question, uh, so I need to answer. Give me an opportunity to rule, okay? Clarify your answer, man. I didn't understand that myself. Did it happen or not? I do not Okay, so may I so you don't want to answer that question, so you don't want to tell us whether it happened or whether it didn't happen, correct? That's not argumentative. Okay, I'll rephrase the question. So you're lying, correct? That's not yeah. question. Okay. Argumentative, it's the same. All right. Sure. Both of you stop talking to each other and direct the question. talking to me. Make your comments to the court. Mr. Johnson, you do realize this is not a trial. Yes, Judge, I realize it's not the trial. When you're dealing with deception and lies, I have an opportunity to go into that. I'm not lying. He asked me was I highly intoxicated. I was. I can only tell what I remember and what I know. Wait on the question. So while she's doing that, you uh oh the outside. So you recall you had the opportunity to observe your father that night, correct? You were in his face, you were talking to him, you interacted with him, correct? Right. And you saw him after the shooting, correct? First, I'm going to show you Defendant's Controls Exhibit A. You said the shooting took place outside, correct? Car shooting. Did the shooting take place outside or inside? He was standing in the doorway. He did some shots. I ran to the back. Did the shooting of Malik take place outside? You said you got shot outside, you watched him come back in. Is that what you said? Yes or no? How do you know that? 
trial. No, you're not on trial. I'm just I'm gonna slow the questions down. Just ask you to give a truthful answer. Uh -huh. Did the shooting take place outside or inside? The shooting started in my inside. He was shot. You said you saw Malik shot outside. Is that true or not? I need some clarification as well. Because you testified that there was two series of shots that took place outside. Is that right? You said there was some shots, there was a pause, and then there was some more shots. Is that right? Okay. You said at the time those shots were being fired, your father was in the doorway. Is that right? Yes. Okay. At some point in time, Malik comes back in. I don't know. I'm sorry? I ran to the back of the kitchen because that was just scaring me. I Did you see Malik back. anymore? I thought you were telling us about how his eyes looked. Yes, when he just walked back in the doorway. So that was right. inside the house, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Was there any shots that, that happened at that time? I don't think those shots either. So the shots that you heard, the only shots that you heard was when your father was in the doorway and was firing shots outside. I I heard the two, then it stopped, then I heard some more shots. I can't even tell you if there's two or three. Okay. I don't know. That's right. At the time that you heard those last shots, where was Malik? Was he inside the house or outside? <laughs> when did yeah, you I see him with his eyes closed? Sorry. May I continue? He was, he was, uh, he was in the doorway. He was in the doorway. He went next up. He was in the doorway part, standing in the doorway. Ma'am, based on the testimony you just said, your testimony under oath today is that Malik was shot by your father on the outside of the house. Yes or no? Okay. So let me help you out. Did you happen to, you stayed there clean, you stayed there and you were at the scene, correct? Right. You recall telling your dad that I got this, I got this? At what? At any point, do you recall telling your dad in the living room of the house, I got this, I got this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you recall when you jumped on your dad's back and your dad was on the floor it wasn't until Malik had struck him several times while you were trying to get him off the back that your dad laid back on the ground and fired shots towards Malik. Yes or no? Okay, let me ask, okay, let me ask you this. You know your dad well, correct? Yeah. You associated with him during that night, correct? Correct. I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit B, picture of your, jet, of your dad. You can look at it. I want you to look at it. And ask you to you see your dad's jaw swollen. Yes. Okay, I'm going to show you another picture. You said it's exhibit C. I'm going to ask you to look on his, right up under his right eye. Do you see 
another mark consistent with him being struck. And that's 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 that's
He was visibly upset, right? I know. Yes or no? Don't lie. Okay. Okay, Okay, that's fine. But <clears throat> Don't you believe when Malik came back in the house and you all refused to leave and the and the disturbance erupted? Didn't you see that the tables were turned over in the living room, the flower pots where the where the actual incident took place, the dirt was out of the flower pot onto the floor? You you saw that, didn't you? And when Malik was shot, you pulled Malik. You were right there when he was shot. You pulled Malik off the couch, didn't you? Oh. You moved the body, and your dad told you, don't move the body, didn't he? He didn't run out the door. He said, don't move the body. What are you doing? You recall that? No. That's why you didn't want to tell the police anything, just like you didn't want to tell us anything about the truth, right? That's supposed to be true. You didn't hear Malik come back in the house and tell your dad right before the shooting. Um, you know, it's kind of my attention that we see Muhammad at the headline being fired. It's a little bit of a Muhammad, are you okay? Just wondering if you may have to get ready. She had to cheat and ask her, where do you want to take one?
Yes. It seems as though uh, this is Muhammad is in a very uh, state right now. Might be like an old history. Yeah. That hasn't been established. I mean, the whole situation is in such a complex. Can I go back to the part? No, no, it's
Mind the next time to take you guys last. So as you know, I thought this was going to be easy. But you know we have Sierra. Uh, yeah, they want, want a journey. So you want to see tomorrow? Zoom. Yeah, you want to see tomorrow? Zoom. So the latest update is our witness is going to be all right. She has an inhaler and she just, just needs to calm down. <clears throat> How much more do you have to go? Um, thank you. Twenty minutes and less now. Power yet. I'll try to hurry up. All right, Ms. Muhammad, let me remind you that you're still under oath, okay? I'll try to get through this, all right? <clears throat> We are back on the record on Leon versus Leon Wells. <coughs> Mr. Johnson. No, I think yeah. Mr. Jaffe wants to. Got to ask you a question, man, but you never really gave a straight answer to, but I'm just going to ask you one part of that interaction and you can answer whatever way you want. Mm -hmm. um, when you were on your dad's back, do you remember? Some of the facts and evidence, rephrase. She says she doesn't recall whether she was on his back or not. She was on his back. Okay. If you were on your dad's back, do you recall shouting out to Malik, what the fuck are you doing? Do you remember that? The question is, yeah. That's a hypothetical. It's not relevant. Rephrase. Do you remember saying, what the fuck are you doing? When, Your Honor? She knows me. She knows? The record needs to be made clear. I'm trying when to protect the witness. Let her, let her answer Mr. the question. Mr. Johnson, again, direct your answers and questions to the court. Yes, sir. And I'm the witness. Sorry. Do not talk to each other. I'm sorry. Rephrase the question, please. You were, you recall saying, what the fuck are you doing to Malik? Saying you're talking to Malik, trying to pull him back. Okay. So I'm going to move on now. 
So you, uh, you, you do agree that things got a little heated, and the only issue between you, your dad, and Malik was you all leaving the house, right? Can, can you testify to that? Ex yeah, several times. Not me. Yeah, she go with your husband, right? <clears throat> you, you know, they played a tape of you taking your dad. You didn't take the one where you and dad had a conversation and you told your dad that you and Joyce need to set up a date where you all can meet and get y'all statements together. To be yeah, honest, that's, that's not this I'm asking the question, do you recall ask the, 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 the conversation where you and dad spoke about you telling your dad that you and Joyce need to get together, make a date to get together to talk to get your statements together. That's incorrect. Okay. So at no point in time did you ever tell the police on any occasion, and you stand by that now, that you saw the fighting in the living room, the shooting, and what occurred between you, between your dad and Malik. Objection, compound question. I think it's two of those questions. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah. You never told, I was just trying to hurry up, Judge. You never told the police or anybody on any occasion, and you're not willing to do it today, today that you saw Malik and your dad have a violent fight in the living room. Objection, pass and answer. That has been asked and answered. I think the question was, did it occur? Now I'm asking her, she, that's a different question. She never told the police, so I'm just trying. It's been asked okay. and asked. When they were talking about, um, Your dad never, when he talked to you about uh, plan A, plan B on the phone, he never, he asked you about a warrant. He didn't think they had a warrant for him, correct? <laughs> right? Yeah. But he never said he was going to uh, uh, flee from, if a warrant was yeah. issued, right? Are you asking about the conversation? Yeah. Audio or audio speaks for itself. Okay. So in your in the statement that you gave the police the second time around, after you had a chance to reflect,
are you approaching the door? <coughs> you, you may approach. You, uh, let me ask you a question. Um, you never told the police that you saw Mr. Wells fire a gun shoot and leap outside on the grass or anything like that. Objection asked and answered. Okay. He's already asked whether Not he saw this whether she saw it. Oh, no, one at a time. Let me make this objection. What is it? Counsel has already asked, I believe a number of times, <clears throat> whether Mrs. Muhammad saw Mr. Wells fire the gun either inside I think the testimony is inside clear that she said he test she testified that he was in the doorway firing shots. He fired two shots, there was a pause, and then there was some other shots. My question is specifically on the statement that she gave the police to point out her credibility and that she lied to the police again, Judge. That's why if you listen to the question, it's different. I'm applying it to something else. And I, I have a right to do that under cross-examination. I'm asking her lies. in the she's made, say it. she's made several, at least four different statements. I'm asking her about the statement that she made the second time, week later, when she came to the police, volunteering information, she still doesn't tell them about where he was shot. And it's all that's already been testified to. No, it has a couple of times. What no. she didn't say in that in that second interview. No. And she explained why she left. I need the record to show what I'm talking about in this statement. I asked her a general statement. Whether she lied or not, but I'm asking her what she told the police. And it's not in her statement. Is it, so can I ask the question? Okay. Nowhere in your statement do you tell the police when you were sober, week later, had a chance to think about it. Nowhere did you tell the police you saw your dad stand in the doorway and shoot Malik outside. Yes or no? And you can read it if you want. You didn't tell the police that then, correct? In the second statement he's referring to. When you shot outside, I still, I never see Malik, so how can I say that he shot Malik? I said that I heard the shoot the two guns, and I ran to the back. I never seen him. You didn't tell the police that, did you? In the second statement. Is that what you mean, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Did you tell them that in the second statement? It says, I'm going to ask you to read the statement, ma'am. Okay. Well, Your Honor, is she trying to answer the question? I guess I think that the question was what she told police. She the counsel is question. given. Counsel has given Mrs. Muhammad this the written statement that police were about. So she's re she's referring to that statement to answer the question. And now counsel that's telling her she can't. Read. She cannot read hearsay into the statement. I'm asking her is what is that in her statement, Judge? That's the problem. What you read? read? Did you tell the police that? Based on what you just read this morning? Yes or no, ma'am? Your Honor, I think, I think there's a problem with the question. I think she's trying to answer it by referring to the statement. You didn't see it in there, correct? I'm not sure we can show you your question, so I can tell you. You never told the police that you saw Malik get shot outside by your father, whether he fell down walk back into the house or anything of that sort. Correct? That's not in here. I didn't hear you. What you said? 
The question is, ma'am, what you saw. Did you, did you see? Okay, I'm gonna break it down one more time. Did you see anything in there saying that you saw Malik shot outside? Yes or no? Yeah. Did you see anything in this statement that says you watched Malik walk back through the front door? He had blood coming out both nostrils. Did you see that in the statement? Yes or no? You need to refresh your recollection yeah. again? You told the police when you heard the gunshots, you ran outside, right? Yes or no? But you, in your statement, you said you told the police. I know what you said here. Was that another lie? <clears throat> okay, let me ask you another question since you don't want to answer that. Um, how do you explain when you told the police, I ran outside? You want to see that? So were you, did you run outside or were you inside? Which one do you want us to believe? Okay, I'll move on. And then you say, contrary to what you've already testified at some other point, you say, you told the police, I came back in the house and I saw Malik and blood was coming out of his nose, right? When you came back in the house, Malik, oh, strike that, because I'm not going to doubt your answer. My question is, you saw Malik lying on the floor, well, strike that. You actually pulled Malik off the couch, the part of the couch where he had fallen after being shot, and you, he was on the floor, and you saw the blood coming out his nose, as you told the police initially, correct? Yes or no? We never told them that they came off the couch. I'm asking you for the truth. Did you not pull Malik down off the couch after he fell back, after being shot? Judge didn't ask an answer. So that's the last time that, that question was asked. You did have a break. Yes or no? Okay, you don't want to answer that no, question? No, I do not remember pulling the police off the couch. I'm you, sorry, I was in shock. I don't remember pulling off my couch. Well, you recall immediately after he was shot, you jumped on his body and tried to start giving him CPR. You remember that? Yes or no? 
Yeah. Okay. He wasn't outside then, what? <laughs> he was in the center of the floor where all the other evidence was that where they where they uh, struggled, correct? Okay, but that's where his body was laying, correct? I can't tell you that because I never seen some struggle. I'm talking about the body. The body was where it was found after you put him on the floor, started doing uh, CPR, pounding on his chest. You recall that? Yeah, I'm going to move on. Uh, right before the shooting occurred, ma'am, do you recall Chris, it's tight and coming from. Where I'm do you, where it's where tight. Do you it's tight and never occur. Okay. All right. Do you recall prior to the argument moving towards the front door or the skirmish or whatever beginning, do you recall Malik, after he got back into the house, storming him to your dad's face, pounding his hand, saying, pops, pops. Objection, Your Honor. Do you remember anything like that? Objection, Your Honor. This okay. is asked and answered. He's asking the same question. I'm He's asking him say pop in a different, point. little, little, changing a little bit different, so he can keep asking the same questions. This is harassing the witness. She said that she did not remember anything like that, Mr. Johnson. Judge, based on her testimony, I don't believe it, so I've got a right to ask it. She answers your question. She okay. says she doesn't remember anything. Okay. Those are different facts, though. And when she says she doesn't recall that, that's another lie. That's all, Judge. And again, object to the argument of Mr. Thompson. Okay. No, I'm just saying my purpose for that proffer. I made my rule. Okay. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just telling you why I was asking that. I just want you to move on. I'm almost finished. Do you recall I don't know if I asked that so I'm not going to Nothing for me. Uh, no, nothing really, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. You may slow down. I just asked counsel that counsel would stipulate to the date of the incident being January 27, 2024. So I have to call the officer to testify. Oh, I do have one more question, Judge. I'm sorry. No, Your Honor. I make a decision. Well, I'm, I'm just down Jack. I call you. I've never seen such a thing. Thank you, nothing else. <sighs> Your Honor, I'm just asking for a stipulation. It, it, it might have come up. I just want to make sure as far as the date of the incident, January 27, 2024. Are you willing to stipulate that? So stipulate. Court receives that stipulation. And you are with that, if people have no further Does the defendant have any witnesses? No, Your Honor. People move for bind over on all down. Mr. Johnson. Uh, Judge, I would. Uh... I would argue that based on the proofs, Judge, there's been no uh, evidence. I don't think the prosecutor has met his burden, uh, particularly under people who need to be failed. 
with the credibility of the witness, and I know this court's position on credibility, but uh, this court uh, does have the power and discretion to deal with the issue of credibility. I don't believe there's anything to show that my client premeditated uh, to, to uh, shoot and kill this gentleman. Uh, asking somebody to leave the house because of uh, disruption, asking, uh, I think there's been some evidence that he was struck, that he was hit, and I'm asking this court to attach the credibility issues to that because of her bias. Uh, her, it, it's, a, it's a tough situation. Her husband never moved for the admission of those exhibits and he didn't publish them. Oh, I didn't publish them? I'm sorry, Judge. You didn't move for the admission. I wasn't going to move for the admission. I was just going to. You can't okay, I asked for the admission, Judge, and to publish them too. But there's no, there's been no foundation as to when those pictures were taken. Okay, Judge. I mean, you know, with that witness, I did good to get her to look at him. You know, and that's all I'm trying to do: bring this court enough evidence so that this court really sees what's happening. So let's just break it down. The credibility issues are outrageous. She gives three different statements of what happened. She tells, she says she can't even recall what she did, but she vacillates and this court can take into consideration the demeanor of the witness, how the witness answers the question. Was the witness cooperative? Did the witness seem as though she didn't want to answer the question? Did the witness refuse to answer the question? Did the witness seem to be evasive? I pointed out for this court to consider how she acted during the interview. I pointed out how she made these additional statements that there were that they were still bad. I'm saying to the court, I got her to say this was her dad. This is how he looked at it at that time, and that his jaw was swollen. She saw the mark on the, under his ear. If she wants to lie about she didn't see the fight, she didn't see the shooting. Well. I showed that the shooting didn't take place outside. The shooting took place inside. She did, gave uh, a CPR inside. He never walked back into the house. They don't have to present their witnesses to make it more clear. I only tried to give this court more clarity by taking the pictures to show my client was beat down. If he was beat down, if he was struck, there's no evidence to show that he had a beef with this client, with this gentleman. There's no uh, evidence to show that he had any bad blood. There's no evidence that he had the time to think and premeditate when she didn't want to testify to whether he got back in the house, but it, we, we can kind of look through the facts that he did come back into the house, but she said he was out of the house, okay? And all I'm saying to the court is, that it was a lot of provocation there. And then if he struck, if he struck judge, he may not have the defense of using deadly force, but if he believes he's getting assaulted and he's being struck and he's down and then he shoots, that's what we got. And I believe judge, it's not premeditated murder for those reasons. And I'm asking the court, just because of the credibility issues being so glaring about the, the corpus delecti, really, of the, of the crime, I, 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 I'm asking this court not to send it over on a premeditated the murder. I'm asking for a second degree, Judge. Corpus delecti refers to the defendant's statement being offered without. Well, I, I'm using it in a different way to strike that. Okay, but that's what I'm asking for the court to do. The court needs to hear anything further. You don't want to say anything, obviously. I mean, I, I think the evidence speaks for itself. We have two witnesses here, and the inference that can be uh, that can be made from both testimonies is that it was the defendant who was shot, Mr. Khan. Now, first we had uh, Mr. Mosley who testified, and he testified that he heard the gunshots. Uh, and then 
uh, when you hit it. And then just prior, and then the second gunshot, so you heard, just prior to the second gunshots, he heard uh, the defendant, sorry, uh, Mr. Muhammad, make a comment uh, to the effect of, if you're going to shoot, just shoot and kill me. Um, and then also, contemporaneous with that, also heard the, heard the defendant's voice and described it as an as an uh, or, uh, that was a defendant's voice. And it was, it was, that was almost that like, a, it was like a split second in between uh, the shots fired and those voices. So I don't that, think that said whose voice that was. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mosley, was like, uh. Mr. Mosley testified on direct that that was, that he did identify that as a defendant's voice. That was in the direct examination. So that uh, that testimony is consistent with the defendant. Uh, nobody else had a gun. Oh, because he said, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't was, doubt that the defendant is the shooter. I don't think that's the issue. I don't think the defense even contests that. The issue is whether or not the people have presented evidence of premeditation and deliberation. So then as to premeditation, so the act of the defendant, so there, there's an argument between, first of all, it sounds like it's Mrs. Muhammad and her husband, and then the defendant intervenes. We're not quite clear on what, what the argument is and why the defendant gets involved. The defendant gets involved. Uh, the defendant at some point is telling uh, Mr. Muhammad to leave. The defendant makes takes the action of walking from the kitchen area through the living room to his bedroom, and then opening up from a from a box, sounds like a lunch box, and taking out his gun from that lunch box. Then, with that gun, he then walks back out to the living room, walks to the doorway, and then starts firing. And at, at some point, he's also yelling at, uh, at Mr. Muhammad. And, and then, so that act of going to get his gun, then going outside, firing the gun, and then ultimately, at some point, within, it, it sounds like it might be a couple minutes or whatnot, there are additional shots, and those may, may have been the fatal shots. But there, there is the act of actually shooting Mr. Muhammad, and that's after he had the, he had the chance to think twice about this, whether to get his gun. Nobody else had a gun. There's no evidence. Defense makes the argument this is self-defense. Absolutely no evidence, nothing in evidence that the defendant's life or even, even that he was facing some kind of an assault. There's nothing in evidence of it. Defense asks a lot of questions, leading questions, assuming that something was going on. And Mrs. Muhammad expressly stated that she didn't know anything about a fight, there wasn't any fight. So that is so, so there's, there's no evidence that after he got the gun, there was any kind of conflict that forced him to react in self-defense. Again, no other no other people there were on. So with that, it doesn't take, you know, a, a day's planning, as the court knows, doesn't take an hour. I can't see planning. that it has been judge. I was asked, I asked for the jury in. There's no foundation for it. I don't know when those pictures were taken. I agree. Uh, Your Honor, and then I'd also just point to the medical examiner's report, which indicates that there's six gunshots. Mr. Muhammad was shot six times. So that's also appropriate of, of the premeditation. So I ask the court to consider that and find that uh, first degree murder. Judge, he was not shot six times. Those are gunshot wounds, exit and entrance wounds. So that's not true. And uh, actually, uh, Judge, I think there's no evidence that he came, that he went and retrieved the gun and went outside and shot, so, the, shot the gun. The medical examiner's report says six gunshot wounds on the body, two to the head, two to the neck, one to the chest, and one to the back. Yeah, but they don't they count the exit and uh, the exit and entrance wounds, yes, gunshot So I see. But at any rate, Judge, I was just saying that uh, uh, 
there was no clear evidence that on timing that when he went and got the gun and she never would give up. And that's the problem with credibility issues because when I tried to tie it in to uh, when he got the gun and when the shooting occurred, you can't link them together because we do know that the prosecutor loses its argument on him getting the gun and going to the door and then shooting the victim outside. That's not the case. He wasn't found outside. He wasn't shot outside. And so you, you can't, okay. you know. So the, again, the medical examiner's report indicates one, two, three, four, five entrance gunshot wounds. Okay. Judge, I just want to also say, if you look at the medical report, you can also see that there, where those shots were fired, you look up, up right in here, Judge, and then there's a graze right here, which is consistent with the person being over that individual. You're going to make that argument should this matter go to trial. I understand, Judge, but all I can do is give you the facts uh, and try to give some life to them. And that's why I brought you the pictures and things of that sort. You're right about the foundation. You know, of course, it says five entrance gunshot Okay. But I'm ready to move. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I don't think there's any issue as to the identification of the defendant, Leon Wells, as being the shooter here. Apparently, Mr. Wells is the father of Kyra, who was married to the defendant, Marcello Muhammad. There were two witnesses called by the people. First witness pretty much tells us that he heard arguing. This arguing was between the defendant and Mr. Muhammad. And actually, he said that Kyra was involved in the argument too. I'm satisfied that this was the defendant's house and the defendant may have been trying to get Mr. Muhammad and his daughter to leave the house. In trying to make sense of all of this as to what happened, everybody's there drinking. Perhaps Mr. Muhammad and Ms. Muhammad were being disrespectful. I don't know the case, but for whatever reason, the defendant wanted him to leave. So I do believe that. I also believe that the defendant went and retrieved the gun from this lunch bag of sorts. I don't have any issue with that because we do know a gun was used and the defendant used that gun. And although there was some issues with Kyra Muhammad's testimony and her credibility, as everyone knows here, this court, for the jury instructions, reads that I can believe all part or none of the witness's testimony. And I do believe that portion of her testimony that says the defendant went and retrieved that gun from a lunch bag. I've said it over and over again, you cannot bring a gun to a fist fight. Apparently that's what the defendant ultimately did, but as it relates to the charge, the first degree murder premeditated, have the people shown premeditation here? The fact that he was shot multiple times does not in and of itself give us premeditation and deliberation. And there is case law on that point. There was an argument, argument, and even a fight ensuing from that argument. That lends more to a second degree murder as opposed to a first degree murder premeditated. I know I took very, I took very careful attention to each witness as they testified, and as it relates to Kyra Muhammad when she testified. I noticed she has a breakdown of sorts each time when asked about her moving the body and whether or not she jumped on her husband's back and that type of thing. She testified, although the pictures were not admitted, she testified that there was some injury to the defendant's face. There was a mark under his eye and then perhaps his jaw was swollen. So it sounds to the court that there was some kind of altercation.
What does not make sense to the court is this whole leaving out the house and coming back. We never did get a clear answer as to he went to the doorway and was firing these shots. What I heard initially, he fired two shots, and then there was a second round of shots. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Muhammad comes in the house, and I don't know if he was supposed to be shot then because she never told me that, or if he collapsed from being shot while he was outside. But it makes no sense to the court that if someone's shooting from you, shooting at you from the door, that you're going to come back towards the shots. That makes no sense at all. Somebody's shooting at me, I'm trying to get away from you. I'm not going to walk towards somebody who's shooting. That doesn't make sense. So I'm, I don't find her testimony credible on that point in that I believe that Mr. Muhammad was shot inside of the house, and that was consistent with the first witness's testimony as to when he said he heard the shots, <coughs> He ran from the kitchen to the front door. And the defendant wasn't there. And Kyra Muhammad was trying to revive her husband. I believe those shots took place inside of the house. I also believe that there was some precipitation that took place prior to those shots being fired as well. I'm not sure. The defendant was a big guy. Well, he was heavy. He was short but heavy. 5'6", 273 pounds, 39 years old. The defendant was about maybe 160, 65 pounds wet, maybe. Probably about 5'7", 5'6", as well. Am I close? Yeah, probably. Okay. Not a fisherman, but anyway. Not sure why the defendant felt the need to arm himself as to what was going on in there, but he did in fact arm himself. But I don't think that there was a premeditated intent to kill. There was certainly creating a high risk of death or great bodily harm in getting that gun and firing that shot and killing Mr. Muhammad. But I think the premeditation here is lacking primarily because the witness that testified in all candor, she was terrible. She was um, not very credible in many points. First witness was a little more credible, but he wasn't very helpful. But we, what we do know is that the defendant did shoot and kill our fellow Muhammad. The court is going to bind over on the amended charge of second degree murder and the felon in possession. Oh, did I get one? Yeah, the felon in possession of the firearm as well as it should be two counts of felony firearm. The court finding those charges were committed in the city of Detroit. The court finding probable cause to believe this defendant committed will bind the defendant over to Wayne County Third Circuit Court Criminal Division for proceedings. His arraignment on the information date and time will be March 19, 2024, at 9 o'clock a.m. Time um, will be continued. Judge, thank you for your indulgence and consideration. All right. Thank you. Thanks, no. I think the paper is down. Be a couple minutes. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> I know that's funny. <laughs> oh, no. All these things, right? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll be here at five o'clock. I know.
Call in case two four five five six seven eight people of the state of Michigan versus Walter Robert Gray. Defendant is charged with count one homicide, murder, second degree, count two felony firearm. Appearances for the record. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Steve Lockwood for people P seven zero six six eight. And good afternoon, Your Honor, to your staff, Attorney Brian Jaffe, on behalf of Walter Gray, who is present, standing to my left. Tell me your name for the record, sir. Walter Gray. There's a date time set for your examination. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, Judge. How many witnesses for the case? Uh, I believe just one, Judge. Do you have any preliminary matters before you call your you you witness? We got I think just three stipulations to put on record. Uh, yeah. Would you like to do that now with the medical examiner's report? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Uh, I have a medical examiner's report dated January 27, 2024. The deceased name is Malik Lofton. Uh, summary and opinion from Dr. Lachlan Song is that the uh, student died of multiple gunshot wounds, two of them, uh, in manner of death is homicide. So they had eight for weeks. I was thinking that while I was listening. Sure. And I do have a report I can give it to the report. You stipulate to the Emmy report, Council. Can I have just one moment? I don't want to delay this process, but I just said I can have 30 seconds, please. I guess my I guess the report will speak for itself, but in terms of the stipulation to the autopsy, um, it does look like there were two gunshot wounds. But I, based on the report, I don't I don't I think there's I don't think it's clear whether or not there was that's from one shot um, or two shots. I think, and I just want to stipulate. I mean, I just want to place that in the record. So in terms of stipulation, I guess I would say it's the substance, but not form. Um, my understanding is that it was a single gunshot wound that. Was, Sealed gunshot bullet, the bullet that was recovered. Um, you know, so again, it's multiple gunshot wounds. I don't read the report like that, actually. Well, the report speaks for itself. What does the report say? Well, so it says multiple caused by multiple gunshot wounds, but again, in terms of the actual, uh, if you go to the, the actual writing in the report, it does document two shots, um, two gunshot wounds. And I don't know if you can necessarily distinguish or separate. Those two gunshot wounds, as or yeah, as two shots. Is it there was it was a through and through? Is what I'm saying. So I guess uh, no, you know you. again. I know that it does speak for itself. I'm not. No, I'm not going to stipulate. How do you get a, how do you get a bullet? So a single bullet, correct? So it was a through and through, though. So one shot. Correct. But if one shot was an entrance and an exit wound. The exit wound wouldn't allow you to recover a bullet within the body, right? That is correct. So, so when I, I guess when I say uh, one bullet shall recover, I, I guess I would then even say that that's with regards to recovering the bullet that was actually the subject of the through and through, unless I'm not reading this correctly. Uh, I don't believe that's correct. Uh, there was two shots. One was through and through. I believe that was to the arm. And one I'm not sure where that bullet ended up. Uh, the other one was covered from the side of the body. 
Okay, so two shots. So again, for, for, for again, so so stipulated as to substance, not form. That's all I would say if that makes if that makes sense, Your Honor. What's what's the issue with form? Well, so for example, it says that. Um, The entrance wounds, entrance wounds present themselves without evidence of close range fire. However, I think as this court is aware, uh, to this determine- what you just said, you say entrance wounds as in plural, right? I'm sorry, entrance gunshot wound, not, my apologies, on the lateral left chest without, without evidence of close range firing. And, I, and I, what I would say as a practical matter is that uh, again, and I would assume as this court is aware, generally speaking to determine range of fire so one would look to any stiplings or suit around the uh entry point of the bullet however it's also well known that any clothing on the person at the time of the shooting would in fact offset any uh gunshot residue or stippling around the, the gunshot I understand why you're telling me so i guess so therefore what i say in terms of of um my stipulation again it would go as to uh substance not form because in terms of you know no evidence without if there's no evidence of any close range firing, Correct. there's no evidence of that this examiner saw. That doesn't mean, like you said, that it, there wasn't any found on the clothing that the person was wearing at the time. Okay, so again, it doesn't exclude close range firing, and that's, that's, I guess, is what I'm saying. But they didn't exclude that. That's Correct. Not what they're then, saying. They're then, just telling you what their findings are, understood. what they saw in the exam. So then, for that, so then, so stipulated, Your Honor, for exam purposes. So that's the question. Um, I did include just the uh, task calendar report of the victim, and there's just four photos of the patient through the autopsy photo. I believe that we will stipulate that as well. Correct, Your Honor, for exam purposes only. Correct. Oh, it's the investigation. And then, uh, Mr. Jackie also stipulates that we would allow, I have 10 photos here taken from the uh, forensic tech investigator Stephanie Sparks. She's here to testify, Your Honor, if you need her. Um, however, I've asked Mr. Jaffe if we don't need her and she can just admit these kind of photos. Any objection to the photo? No. And they can and they can. Well, Mark is one exhibit for the individual. What exhibit is that? So, Your Honor, I was so stipulated, uh, but we're also going to agree to a stipulation as to a knife that was also recovered. Is that correct, Mr. Lockweiler? Yes. What exhibit is that? This would be exhibit two. Okay. And then the. will admit people's proposed exhibit two into evidence as people's exhibit two. Thank you. And then and again, Your Honor, in terms of the inclusion of the picture of the knife that was also recovered, uh, I, I can print it off after the exam. All right. There was a knife. And then the other stipulation, Your Honor, was this uh, celebrate communication. I believe that that's correct, Mr. Lockweiler. And a phone extraction. Um, Mr. Lockweiler, do you have a phone extraction? That would appear to document dialogue between the decedent and um, uh, Diamond Walton. You stipulate that? Judge, I've seen the uh, phone down. I'll stipulate that what he has there. And that's going to be defensive, so yeah. One or day where the court uh, defense exhibit A, did you have it marked it? I have not. Court will admit by stipulation defense exhibit A. Yes. Oh, Anything else, Jim? That's it. Ready to go, Your Honor. All right. All witness. He was first witness. Uh, I believe the only witness would be Diamond Walton. He's right there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please give your name and spell it to the young lady, see if they're waiting. Yes. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear? Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so don't be done? Thank you. Please have a seat in the box right next to me, right here. What about the road? There so should be a microphone somewhere around me on the stick. You see it? Yeah. Please stand in your lap and speak directly into that voice. Okay? Yeah. Place the microphone in your lap and speak directly into the voice. Yeah. You don't have to get too close. It's real sense. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you, Judge. Uh, good afternoon. Could you say your name for the record again? Spell it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know the gentleman sitting over here at the table yes. in the green, the green shirt here. Yes. And what is his name? Walter. Walter. Yeah. You know his last name? Gray. How do you know Walter Gray? It's my red. Do you recall where you were January 25th of this year? Say. Do you recall where you were January 25th of this year? Yeah. Around 10 30, 10, 10 30? Yes. Where were you? Where were you? Come on, when I was there at the house. Where are you? Well, I'm asking. Where was I? Yes, where were you on January 25th? I was in the park. I was watching in my house to get the home. Okay, and where is that located? You know the address? I'm Kelly. I'm Kelly. I'm uh, Casino. Do you know the address? Yes, 18474 Gun Road. Is that in Detroit? Yes. That's in Wayne County? Yes. Uh, what were you doing there? Get my house together, getting ready to move. Okay. And did you leave there at any time? Yes, I'm not understanding what you're saying. I'm asking you. So when I got back to the house, got back from where? From moving stuff out, washing and all that. Okay. So you're at your house and you're moving your stuff. Did you go anywhere that night? Yes, I was outside. Where outside? Right. I had to drop my friend's boyfriend off. We dropped my friend's boyfriend off. Okay. Did you do anything else? Well, uh, the next thing we had to go pick up water from work. And... Okay. And so, where did you have to pick Walter up from? From the job. Where is that at? On the crash. Uh, do you know about what time that was? It was around like, I really just got to take the time to uh, who are you with? Who are we? You, yeah, you said we had to pick Walter up. And we, leave. My friend. Who's your friend? Felicia. Uh, does Felicia have a last name? Baker. Anybody else with you that day or that night? No, it's not my boyfriend. I'm sorry, what was that? It's not my boyfriend. Okay, but and you said you got her boyfriend off somewhere. Yeah. Was that be, was that before you picked Walter up from work? Yes. Uh, so then it was just was it just you, Walter, and Felicia in the in the car? Yeah, we picked them up. Yes. Okay, and then where did you go? To the house. Uh, to what house? To Kelly house. Are you saying that the house that's on Kelly or Kelly's house? The Kelly, the house that's on Kelly, you went to the house. Okay, and that's where you were staying, right? Yes. Uh, and then what happened when you got the got back to your house? My thing followed. Got to the house. Thing followed was here. He was talking. All right. What? Um. Uh, I'll pause you there. What, what's your baby father's name? 
And where was he there? He was talking on the back porch. Okay, so he was already at the house when he got back to your house? Yeah, when I got there, he just, he came, I don't know where he came from, but when, he, when I got there, we were talking, and then that's when the incident popped off. Okay, so was Malik there before you went to pick your brother up? No, he wasn't, I don't know, he came out of nowhere. Okay. He came from the garage way. All right, so you're, you're on your back porch talking, was that an argument? No, it wasn't an argument. Uh, all right, and then you said, and that's when things popped off. What do you mean by that? That's when the incident happened. What, what incident are you talking about? A shooting happened. All right, so a shooting happened? Yes. Who got shot? Yeah. And did you see who shot me? Yes. Who shot me? Who was it? <clears throat> And did you see the gun in Walter's hand? Yes. Can you describe the gun? It's a nine. 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 It's a how are you familiar with the gun? It was mine. With your gun? Yes. Where did you keep your gun? In my safe. And where was your safe usually kept? My safe is still up in my closet. Okay. And what did uh was Walter in the kitchen with you when you were arguing with Malik? No. So where did Walter come? He came up here. He came up here. He came up here. How many times? I was sitting there. All I know is he came down here. Right? How many times did Walter? I think I shot you. How many times did Walter shoot me? The clip only holds 10 bullets, so when he had to shoot the whole bullets out, it was just a little lame. Like, so you heard more than one gunshot? Yeah, it was more than one gunshot. Does my approach? You may. I'm going to show you uh, this mark. People's exhibit number two. I'm going to go to the second exhibit of photograph. The second photograph. Can you tell us what that picture is? No, I mean, that's, that's, your, that's your house? Yeah. Uh, so that's a stove? Yeah. And then, is this the area that you're talking about where the shot? Yeah. Can we fall down? Yeah, he had to, he had to fall down. He, he was in the kitchen. He was out. He had to fall down. He got shot outside. He was still in the kitchen. Okay. And that doorway that we see by the stove there. This doorway here to the right. Yeah, he fell in the middle. Okay. Was that real feet outside? Yeah, this is the outside. And what was this picture of? Um, the room. What room is that? The room that he was in. Who was he? Walter. So was Walter staying at the house? Yes. And you were staying there? Yes. And so this would have been Walter's bedroom? Yes. And for the record, I believe I am on the page. Did you store ammunition with your gun? Did I store what? Ammunition with your gun. Was your gun loaded? No, my gun never loaded. I got two clips with one never loaded. It's all in my face. You had two clips? Yes. In the safe with the gun? Yes. And did you have bullets in the no. safe with it? Well, in my face? Not in the safe. Bullets in a box anywhere? 
cross examine? Yes, sir. Thank you. And I'm going to work backwards for a second, uh, but I'm going to ask you a series of questions right now, okay? <laughs> Just so I'm clear, it's your testimony, ma'am, that, that you called 911 this matter, correct? Mm -hmm. It's your testimony. You told the 911 operator that, that, that Walter shot the lead. That's your testimony under oath today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play a copy of the 911 call that was made by Ms. Uh, Ms. Gray, if I may. Okay. Thank you. Can you... You moving for the admission no, yeah. objection? I'm not moving for the admission. I'm just using for impeachment purposes. Oh, for impeachment purposes. Right. I'll, move for, I'll, I'll move for the admission, actually, at this point. Proposed exhibit. Uh, you said that you've done one call? Yeah, I don't have any answer. Thank you, Your Honor. So the people is, uh, excuse me, defense exhibit E. Your dad put the uh, microphone to the computer. Thank you. Hi, um, that's wrong. Yeah, that's the wrong one. You're on Thursday, January 25, 2024, 2257 and 0 7 seconds. Sorry, I'm going to walk with the address. Where's the address? Why is it Yeah. Okay. Is there a phone number here? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Thursday, January 25, 2024. 
the, the phone number there. And you recognize the number that I'm sending you or showing you? Yeah, that's the phone number. Okay, so then, so what you just, what you're identifying is a, is a message sent from uh, Malik to you, correct? Well, but I guess right in, in this portion here, would that be accurate though in terms of the numbers, man? That's from you, that's from him to you, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay, he might need some Okay, so, so, so with this, I guess, um, I guess perhaps refresh your memory, man, but you just identified your number and the police number, correct? Right. Okay. Right. And this is at 1046 p.m. on, on January 25th, 2024, correct? Right. Okay. And that was the night of the shooting, correct? Yes. All right. And in this exchange that Malik sent you, he sent you a text that said explicitly, this is the end of this bitch. I don't care. If you do start over from the bottom, you're going to learn today. Mark my words. They don't have nothing to do right now. Ma'am, so my question is, that's a text that he sent you, correct? They don't have nothing to do So, right ma'am, was that a text message that he sent you, yes or no? Okay, and also, actually, interestingly, uh, you gave a statement to the police as well, correct? Yes. All right, and you told the police you get that on the, when you spoke to the homicide detective that you um, were ignoring his calls that day. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so if there's a recorded interview of you in the 1300 building and with Detroit homicide saying that on video, that'd be a lie. Is that your testimony? Well, I probably did. There's so much going on right now. Okay. I, got, I got a lot going on right okay, now. Okay, so. Did. Okay, so it's on video, and that's what you said, and that's what you said, correct? It just don't have nothing to do. But man, it was on video, and that's what you said. One at a time, we're talking real fast. I'm sorry, you're right. One at a time. You got this. We're going to talk to him back here. We're going to talk to him. So again, man, if you would have five That's okay. I'll slow down. I stopped that. It's a video that's then going to I'm going to slow down. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. You... Testified earlier in direct examination that you provided testimony, just made a statement to a detective at, head, at Detroit Police Headquarters, correct? Yes. Okay. And have you had a chance to review that uh, interview? Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? No, I didn't. Okay. But you, are you aware that it was recorded? Yeah, I was recording. I was okay. So again, so then in terms of you saying that you were ignoring his calls that day, that'd be accurate if that was on the recording, correct? I guess so. Okay. Um, <laughs> no problem. So I just want to flush that point out, and I'm going to go back. So again, I'm the, I'm the ninth question, man. So you're, it's your testimony. You, you arrived at your home, and as you're walking into your, up to your home, you said that Lee came out of the garage, correct? Right. Okay. And um, he was trying to come into your home, correct? He's walking out of the garage. He's yeah. always nothing new. Okay. To show, as you said, just showing up, correct? He's always showing up. Okay. And there's a practical matter. Uh, well, if you, you recall the order of the people. So you you get to your house and you're with Felicia and uh, Walter, correct? Mm -hmm. Walter being your brother, correct? Yes. Okay. And you get to your home. Does Walter walk in first, or do you, do you recall the order of people walking into your home? Okay. He walking up, he talks to him, they already went in the house. Okay. And they're going into the back door, correct? Right. All right. And do you recall Ted does? Telling the detective that Malik doesn't like other people in your home, is that correct? Ma'am, please answer my question, okay? It's really important that you answer my question, okay? Yeah. You don't get to ask questions, just answer them. Okay. okay. Ma'am, uh, do you recall telling the, the detective they spoke to in Homicide Headquarters that Malik doesn't like you around other people, is that correct? Right. And he doesn't like he didn't like the fact that Walter was living in your home, correct? No. He, so he, he liked, didn't like the fact that nobody lived in my home. Like, okay. you know why? They, 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 they didn't want to be to themselves with their baby mama. That's how they went. Okay. So you're saying he wanted you to himself then, correct? Right. He, he, wanted, very, he wanted his family to himself. He wanted you to but himself. I was being nice to having everybody in my crib. Man, he wanted you to himself, correct? Right. Okay. And, and as a practical matter, um, your brother, who's living there, was a, you, I guess Malik must have, you, 
Malik viewed that as a threat, correct? Yeah, he testified. Understood. If you know, then Malik, Malik that's going to, I believe you testified, Malik didn't like the fact that Walter was there, correct? Objection. She knows. I can move on. It's fine. It's fine. I can move on. And <laughs> man, do you recall telling the detective that you spoke to in Homestead headquarters that um, that when Malik comes into the house, he's very aggressive in the home? He's not aggressive like that. He just. And, and here's the thing. This is, man, here's the thing. It's just important to tell you to just flush out what you've already testified to and what you know. That's the bottom line. Okay, that's it. We're not, I'm, I'm not attacking you, believe it or not. I'm just trying to just clarify information, okay? I can slow down if that helps you. Is see no, no, no. Okay, so, so you didn't tell the homicide headquarters on, on a reported interview yeah, that he's not aggressive? One at a time. You didn't tell homicide headquarters what? That, that, he, that he's aggressive and, and he's in the house. And he, yeah, he's aggressive, but he's not aggressive. Judge, I'm going to object to the form of the question. I believe it's confusing for her to keep asking about whether or not it was an interview at this time or or whether she's remembering what happened when it happened. I think uh, the defense counsel needs to specify a little bit better about when he's looking for the safety. Are you asking sure. for? I can, re I, can re I can rephrase the question. Okay. And I would suggest that we get her testimony on what happened when it happened, as opposed to trying to have her remember what she told her. I'll ask the question. Ma'am. In your recorded interview, uh, would it come as a surprise to you that around 228 minute mark on the two hours and 28 minutes minute mark on the recorded interview, that you told the detective that uh, Malik would always come over to your house 24-7 your house in a bad mood? Do you remember telling the officer that? She's going to my house in a bad mood. Correct. I don't remember telling the officer that oh, was in a bad mood. Okay. Okay, so you're saying if that would have been on the recorded interview, are you saying that that would be incorrect? She said she doesn't remember saying. Okay, fair. And <clears throat> you and you recall, and I believe I asked this question, but I'm asking, just want to clarify. Do you recall telling the detective that I believe the two hour and 29 minute mark that he is aggressive with you uh, when he comes around? Is that correct? No, he's not aggressive. I don't, I don't even know how to put this. Okay. It's confusing me right now. I don't know what you got going on. Sure. Ma'am, prior to the dating question, Let's say, give or take a year prior to date question. Isn't it true that you shot at Malik? No, never I shot. Never put a trigger. Sustained. Never put a trigger. Sustained. Oh. <clears throat> Ma'am, it's your testimony that he wanted, he's your baby daddy, so he wanted, he wanted to stay with himself, correct? Okay. That's yes? Okay. Did he live in the house? Never lived in the house. Okay. Did, how often did he come around? Yeah, a lot of times. Okay. And as a practical matter, you recall telling the, the uh, homicide detective that once Walter moved in, he stopped. He stopped. He stopped essentially threatening you or being aggressive. Did you recall telling the, the homicide detective that? When Walter moved in, he was still over. Okay, so you don't. We so still had our little, um, you know, arguments. You know? We still had an argument when you moved in. It wasn't that different. Okay, so so again, so just so I'm clear, so then, so then and I'll ask these one more time. I don't remember telling them those. Your Honor, at this point, I, all at this point, I'd like to play a portion of the recorded interview that she's already identified as being her. Uh, if I did her, say that, okay. So then let's talk about that. You, so then you would agree that you told the homicide detective that ever since your brother was around, he. He doesn't do none of that anymore. Talking about Malik, is that correct? I don't so, remember what I was object to this line of questioning because he's asking her if she remembers what happened in this interview, and she obviously hasn't watched the interview. She's saying she doesn't remember. So I don't know if he's trying to impeach her, but she's she doesn't remember. So uh, I, I'm not sure where this line of question is. I don't know if it was clear that she said she didn't remember. So you can ask the question if she doesn't remember what you can refresh your recollection or what he's trying to do is impeach her. She doesn't testify as to anything. He's using the 
the video or her interview with police as impeachment against nothing. There's no testimony. Yeah. Didn't testify to any statements on any of this stuff that he's trying to feature on this video. May I respond, Your Honor? And, you know, and again, with the utmost respect to this court, uh, I do think that what, what information I'm planting is going to be extremely relevant, not only for this, for this proceeding right now, but in terms of, you know, to present a, a uh, effective and aggressive defense of my client. Guess what we're trying to figure yeah. out is what is it you're trying to do here? Are you trying to impeach the witness or the pressure of the Well, at this point, let me read, I'll, read, I'll ask the question again, make it, and, uh, then we'll, and then we'll determine if she remembers or not. I can reference the video. Thank you, Ron. So again, man, uh, just go back into the, going back to the recorded interview. Again, at roughly around the two hour, 29 minute mark, you, would it be fair to say, would it come as a surprise to you that you told the homicide detective that ever since your brother was around, he don't do none of that anymore? Do you recall saying that, man? Okay. Okay, Your Honor, at this point, I'd like to refresh this, this witness's uh, uh, memory, if I may. Thank you. I'm just going to play a portion of the video for impeachment purposes, Your Honor. Record, I'm sorry, your record recollection or memory recollection and not for an exhibit, Your Honor. And if I just do the same way, you can just bring the microphone to the video, Your Honor. Yes, sir. And, and if I can just play it by showing the by attaching the microphone to the video the same way I did it. Thank you, Your Honor. Sorry, it's transferred to the to the Genentech players. It takes about 20 seconds around here. I'm sorry, I'm there. 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 I'm
You recall telling law enforcement that he was forcing his way into the house? Sorry. You recall telling the detective uh, at your interview that he was forcing his way into the home? Still. And that'd be a fair statement, correct? Did you tell the police that man that he forced himself into the house? No, when he forced himself into the house. I mean, I don't, I'm asking you. When he forced himself into the house. Did you, did you recall telling the detective that, that he was pushing his way or forcing his way into the home? No. When you have on January 25th, correct. He never forced himself 
Okay. Is your testimony then that you let him in willingly? No issue. Is that your testimony? Say again. So is your testimony under oath that you let him in willingly? No issue. Is that I never let him. He was at the front door. I mean, he was at the back door. He was talking at the back door. Uh -huh. okay. He never made it in the house before the incident. Okay. Door, okay. okay. But man, you'd agree when the police arrived, his, his, his feet, his full, his full body was actually laying down in, in the kitchen with his head right. toward so the back door. Shot, he had to walk in the house. That's when he collapsed on the floor. Okay. He collapsed backwards then? Yeah, backwards. Okay. And and when the police initially arrived, Again, and we, we established you called 911. You did tell them that it was Walter the shooter. When the police arrived, uh, you affirmed or reiterated the fact that Walter was not, you didn't know who the shooter was. Isn't that correct, ma'am? My dad. First of all, this is my little brother. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm messed up right now. I'm not understanding that. So, so, so then is your testimony then that uh, you were trying to cover for him? Is that correct? Well, I never tried to cover for him. Okay. So, ma'am, when the police arrived, uh, you would agree. That when the police arrived, you affirmed your your position that you don't know who shot who shot your, your baby daddy. Isn't that correct? Too much going on that day. I don't, I don't, I'm not so then, ma'am, so then just so I'm clear, when the police arrived in your home, you would agree that you never told them who the shooter was. Isn't that correct, ma'am? Well, I never told them to the police nothing. Like okay. when they got there, we told them like. So, ma'am, so. Is it fair to so when the police so the police did arrive ultimately correct? Yes. Yes. I, am, am I giving you a hard time right now? I'm not following what's so frustrating. Okay. I just keep shoving, like shoving backwards. So like I'm not sure what the issue is. The the police arrived, correct? Yes. Okay. And when the police arrived, you're with Felicia Baker, isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. And, it, and isn't it correct that you tell? Law enforcement that you just got home and you don't know how this happened because when you got home, he's already laying in the kitchen dead or shot. Isn't that what you told them? Police, excuse me, Miss uh, Miss uh, Miss Walton. Isn't that what you told law enforcement? Yes or no? Okay, you're on mad for uh, refresh uh, recollection. So then you would agree it's on the recording. That's what you said, correct? I don't remember. So refresh your memory, ma'am, if I showed you or played for you uh, the body cam footage of the responding officer. It's too much more. I might get it. It's too much more. Okay. Than I so, okay. So you might listen to My baby daddy, my brother. I got, you know, but. Oh. So, ma'am, when law enforcement arrived, will you agree? You told them that you and Felicia just got home and you don't, and you, and you got home, you I found your baby daddy. Excuse me? I said I might get it. Okay. Okay. Would it refresh your memory if I if I played the body cam for you? You don't need to play the body cam. Well, you just said you don't know. So then what she said, I might need to say that. Okay, fair enough. And as a as a practical matter, um and again, it's it's not until you actually are taken to homicide headquarters that you tell the detective that you're speaking to that Walter did in fact shoot Malik, correct? Again? It wasn't until you got into the interrogation room at Homicide Headquarters that Walter uh, shot Malik, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. And do you recall that it was only after the detective started speaking to you about your kids that you, did you say that Walter was the shooter? No, we can't talk about my kids. We can talk about my gun that he shot Malik. Ma'am, to testify right now that he wasn't talking about your kids? That's your testimony? You said you talk about my kid. He started talking about your three kids. You know, that's not that's not your that's that's, that, that's your testimony. He was not talking about that. He's talking about kids at the end. He's talking okay. about kids. He's talking about kids. Excuse me? Yeah, he's talking about kids. Okay, you would agree it was only it was only after you started speaking about your three kids that you uh left at the scene that you uh that you you said that Walter's the shooter, isn't that correct? He was he already knew what was going on, he was just waiting for me to tell him. Sure, but again, he man. Right. But again, man, you would agree that that's what you told, that you, that you didn't tell the detective that Walter was a shooter until he started speaking to you about your kids as you left the scene, correct? Ma'am, is that correct? Is that correct, ma'am? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. And 
Okay, fair enough. Okay. Now, I just want to establish that. Good. Now, going back to the house, when the law enforcement arrived, do you recall when law enforcement arrived where you were when, when, the, when the police arrived? Well, what house? Yeah, in your home, yeah. Do you, re you recall where in the house you were? I was downstairs. You were downstairs or you were upstairs? It was downstairs. Okay. Like in the main floor? Yes. Okay. Do you recall uh, telling law enforcement that you had to finish? Wiping yourself in the bathroom? Yeah, I was upstairs. When he got here, I was upstairs in the bathroom. Okay. And so you recall telling the law enforcement that I'll be right down and I said to wipe myself? You recall? Yeah. Okay. And this is all happening while your, your baby daddy is laying in shot in the kitchen, correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and You didn't. You didn't get your neighbor to come to the CPR, correct? I'm sorry. I didn't get your neighbor to, to come come over and try to try to do CPR. Isn't that correct? No, she came over with the. Excuse me. She came over with the. Right. And when law enforcement arrived, at that point, then it was just you and Felicia in the home, correct? Yes. Right. Where were your three children? They were upstairs. They were what? Upstairs. They were upstairs? Uh, really? Oh, you're talking about where they were there? When yes. they were out, yes. they was in a car. Okay. What car were they in? They were in a car. Okay. When law enforcement arrived, uh, ma'am, the testimony right now is that your three year old, I guess, what, five, four, and one, that's the ages? Yes. Okay. So you're saying that they got in the car and they drove off? Like, no, we put them in a car. Right. We put them in the car. We had to get anywhere from the scene. Okay. She and then we just, we wanted just my kids in the car. Okay, she put them in the, in the car by themselves, correct? We didn't live in the car. Okay. We wanted just my kids. Though. Okay. There's other people's kids in the car also? We were in the car too. All right. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> you didn't tell law enforcement that until you were taken to homicide headquarters, correct? Right. Okay. So you have your minor children in the car. What street was that? Did you have yeah, Not relevant. What is this? What is the relevance of this? Cover up, Your Honor. Motive. That's it, respectfully. That's that's the relevance, Your Honor. My kids been in the car to do it. Well, because Your Honor, the night in question, her kids were in the home with her, and and she she had, it, 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 and, she had to, and she had I think what the evidence does show is that she had to she put them in 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 a car around the block by themselves and and still and is still and is still. I'm sorry, but y'all were talking at the same time. I didn't hear what you said. It was surprising. I think it doesn't show this. We're not at that point yet. I just objected to this question. That's not what the evidence shows. That's what you're saying you hope it shows. But we haven't gotten there. I'm objecting as to relevance. So. Well, Your Honor, here's the thing. I Please. Him to make a record of the statements himself. If I, if I may, if I may, Your Honor. Okay. Actually, I can, if I can re-ask the questions. Thank you. So, ma'am, we're at... The house, the homicide arrived. How many officers arrived, by the way, did you know? Probably a lot of them. Okay. And and then and again, we just you just testified that when they arrived, there's just you and Felicia, correct? Yes. This Baker. Yes? Okay. Yes. And at that point you said that your I believe your testimony was that your kids were no longer in the home when the police arrived, correct? Yeah. Right. When the police arrived, they were now transferred to a car around the where is that correct? They were already gone when the police arrived. Okay. Were they in a moving car or were they in a parked car? They was in a car. Well, was the car parked or was it moving? Okay, just it was in a car. Speculation. She's in the house. She said that they put them in the car. I don't think she, she would know where the car is at. If I can ask another question, Your Honor. Ma'am, how did your, your children with the, with the oldest age being five end up in a white uh, it was a jeep, jeep of sorts, is that correct? They were part of the and they, um, I put them in the park, and they know how to walk too, so. Okay, so, so you're saying that you had them walk in the, uh, No, I put them in the park, they never walked in the car by themselves. Okay, and where was the car? When did you put them in the car? When did you put them in the car? Was it after you called the police? Shoot, I put them in the car, and I had to get them out, I had to get shoot them, I had to get the kids more than 15. Okay. So after the shooting happened, you leave the house with the kids in the, in the car. No, right? I never left the house. I was at the house. So the kids was gone. Ma'am, 
You said that after the shooting happened, you, you want to get the kids away from the scene. And car. please answer my question. You put the kids in the car, correct? Right. And, and did they do they drive? No, they don't drive. Okay, so then did the car end up somewhere other than in front of your home? Uh, prior to the kids arrived. The car pulled off. Excuse me. The car pulled off. The car pulled up by itself. No, it did. Okay, so she someone transferred people were in the car. Excuse me. She had said other people were in the car. So you, so you're saying you put the, your kids in a, in a car with rank with, with other people to drive the car somewhere? Objection, Judge. Again, this is not relevant. Are we talking about a homicide? I'm, I'm feeling this irrelevant here. So she said that because she's lying. She was trying to get. That she said that she was trying to get the kids out of the car. That's kind of backed up by the 911 call she made when she told them to get out of the house. She said she takes them to the car. They get in the car. She said there are other people in the car. I don't know who these other people are, but apparently somebody okay. was able to drive. They drive off. Why is that relevant to the homicide? So, well, it's your, it's here's the thing here. When homicide arrived, um, um, this Walton explicitly stated that no one else was in the home. And so this shows she's lying. Um, so that's all. That's really what I'm establishing. And then, not, and then not to mention, it's because of that, and I and, and as, and essentially is why, apparently, based on the interrogation video, Miss Walton even says anything about Walter being the shooter, because the detective won't let off of her in terms of where these kids are until they recover the kids on the street over and bring them into homicide, actually. Just and so his counsel is just regurgitating what he believes is happening. That's in what the video. video shows. It's not, I'm not mad at anything. It's not, 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 not evidence or testimony. He's not asking questions. He's just trying to get yes, I am. stuff out in front of the witness, uh, I believe, in order to intimidate. I think that's offensive, and I think that's a weak statement by the prosecutor to say that actually. So I don't, unless he's intimidated, I don't know where that's going. Can we just get on with this? <laughs> yeah, case? sure you are. Um, but again, a man, just so we're clear, police arrive and you, 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 you never tell them that the kids were there. Is that correct? They knew the kids were there. The kids were gone. Okay. And uh, there was some questioning about getting to the house, and then while you're speaking to, now I'm going to go back to the shooting period. Your, your testimony right now is that you're in the back, you're in the backyard speaking to, um, would you like the second man? I'm not sure if you're relaxing or not. So. I'll listen. Okay. Um, so you're you're in the you're in the back. You say you're talking to Malik. Is that correct? In the, in the back porch area. Yeah. Okay. And then out of nowhere, it's your testimony that Malik, uh, that Walter comes out and just and just and shoots your your uh, your child's father. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then it's also your testimony that the very same gun that that, that Walter shot him with was your gun. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. After Malik, excuse me. And then as a practical matter, after that takes place. Um, what happened? I believe your testimony was that Malik, to me, that Walter left. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And do you, what did you do with the gun? Did I? What did you do with your gun? No, I wanted it. Okay. And, ma'am, would it come as a surprise that when law enforcement do, in fact, arrive, they actually uh, recovered a, 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 I believe, a, a safe with. Um, Elias, a fully loaded clip in your garbage, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And you, excuse me? Yes. And you put it there, correct? Yes. Okay. And was there a reason why you were throwing away your, your lockbox your, with your gun in it and your, with that held your gun and a fully loaded magazine? So I'm get away from the kids and go all out everywhere. He shot and he let everything out. Okay. So your testimony is that you threw away the loaded magazine, the fully loaded magazine, and the and the, and the gun case in the garbage in the backyard because you want to get that away from the kid. That's your testimony. Is that correct, then? Yeah, I threw it away. And you didn't you didn't tell law enforcement you threw it away, correct? So they probably knew it was in a garbage. They, uh, they recovered it, correct? Yeah, they knew it was in a garbage. Because they because you told them or because they recovered it? Uh, objection, just you ask and answer before we move on to the hearing. Can you go on to the please? Sure. Thank you. Ma'am, your, char your child's father also had a knife on him, isn't that correct? He had a knife on him? Yeah. Now that you know. I don't know what's been in fire. Okay.
Uh, a couple more questions that I'm actually finished. Then more than maybe about five or six ish. Thank you, Ryan. I apologize. Okay, just a couple more questions again. Um, Why didn't you tell 911 that you didn't shot the, your, your child's father? I don't think you want to find out. You just don't really think I was so lost. Like, when all that happened, I was lost. I was so lost. I mean, we what happened. Okay. Okay. And when law enforcement arrived, why didn't you tell them who you, who you thought shot your, your child's father? Once again, I was so like, that's my brother. Oh. Mm. And did you go to did, did you go to homicide headquarters willingly, or were you were you taken there, or were you requested to go there? They did it because my father, my big father died. Okay. They took me there. Okay. Okay. And they and they and then they also read you your Miranda rights as well, correct? Or, when you when you provide your, your statement, you have to also write your Miranda rights, correct? Yeah. And this actually is the last one or two questions. The woman that came over to perform CPR, she was you guys shared a wall with each other, correct? Yeah. And you knew her, correct? Yeah, I know her. That's my name. You had so you had no dealings with her ever. That's your testimony? No, I don't that's my name. I don't I don't need her. She'd be in her own lane. Okay. Another question. Uh, um, Ms. Walton, you don't want to be here today, do you? No. And you testified you had a good relationship with your brother, right? Yes. Do you have any reason to lie about him being shooting? No, I'm not lying about him. Remember, you don't get to ask yes. questions. Oh. May I approach real quick? Yes. Um, you were asking questions by defense counsel about a lockbox. Does this appear to be? Yeah, it's not a lockbox. And it's on page eight, Your Honor. Were you scared after you saw it? I was scared of everything. I'm, I think I hit the blue too. Like, that's what you did when the team. I think I too. Right. And so we're. Should have died. So I'm going to lose. Ma'am, were you standing in between them? No, so I was standing at the door, like, we, we outside to where I'm at the door. We both face the face to each other. And then where did Walter come from? He came from down upstairs, come from downstairs, come from upstairs, come okay. downstairs, and just shot. Like, I behind him? Shot. Come and he came from behind. So at some point you were kind of in between, yes. right? Is that why 
You said that you could have been hit by a bullet? Yes. Um, did you see, you said you don't know what happened out of your gun. Did you see Walter run with your gun? I don't know. I'm running around the house. Hey, I'm, I'm lost right now. I'm, if you didn't see it, you can tell me now. No. Was your gun there after Walter left? No. Uh, All right. So now, understanding that you're kind of in a tough spot, so this is the father of your children. You got more than one child with me? No. One. Okay, so this is the father of your child and your brother, right? Yes. And you thought enough of your brother to have your brother even come live with you, right? Yes, we know where to go. Okay. And fair to say, Malik has not always been an angel. Is that right? He always been angry, but he was, he was a good guy. You know? All right, but you've had a number of domestic disputes with Malik in the past, is that right? Yes. All right, and your brother came to stay with you, and during the time your brother was living with you, Malik had not been doing anything to you or getting into it. We still had a little commotion, but it wasn't like nothing like that. Like, you know, okay. nothing serious. All right, and I think I heard you say that. Malik kind of wanted you, his family to himself. He didn't really want anybody standing. Right? Yes. Yeah. How did he make that known to you? Like, he, he always said, well, I want my family back. He said, I want our space back. That's why I mean, it wasn't nothing serious. Like, did he live with you at any time? No, he never lived with me, but we used to, like, be each other. And I go to his house and he back and back and back. Okay. So, on the day of this incident, Malik's get, Malik's get shot. Were you in an argument with the leader or anything at the point? No, we weren't in an argument. He was just like, I'm gonna listen to my son. Yeah, I'm like, me, I'm just trying to get all this stuff out of this house. And it's it, it, it wasn't no argument. Was like, it a I'm, disagreement? I'm, yeah, he just like, I'm wanting to see my son. And I'm like, me, I'm just trying to get all this stuff out of the house. Was the leader trying to force his way in? No, he wasn't trying to force his way in. He was just saying that he wanted to see his son. <laughs> and I never even got a chance to do that. You know, it won't even, I would never got a chance to even get that part. Like, it was stuff happened so fast. Did you have any discussion with Walter about your relationship with Lee? Like, what discussion? Like, like the domestic disputes that you had in the past and that time. It wasn't no discussion. Are you we used to always get a two minutes in the argument. Did no, no. you share any of that information with Walter? Uh, no. Did any of these disputes ever happen in front of Walter? Well, me and Lee got into a plenty of times in front of him, and nothing happened. All right. So, from the fast forward, I didn't nobody share with me what the safe looks like. Can you tell me what the safe looks like? Is it's it a, is it a combination safe or a safe with the key? It's the safe with it's the, it got a key on it, but it's the way you get in it. Like it's the, the first thing around it. Because it's, it's page eight on exhibit two. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not being clear for the record. But, um, so, and that's where you last kept your gun? Yeah. And you said the gun was unloaded? Yeah, my gun was always loaded, but I see it. How long was Walter there? I'm sorry, how long was Malik there before Walter came down the stairs? How long was it? Because you said he was walking up to the porch, right? Walking yeah, up to we, the door. When we got out the car, he came from out of the garage, walking in, or wherever he came from. I don't know if he came from walking in or where. He came walking in. As he did, I mean, they walked up. They went in the house. I said, in the, I was sitting right there at the door, just wait, you know, when you talk. And whatever we were talking about, and all that just, Excellent. You want to know one more talk? Stuff that happened fast. Did you know the police that night? Yes. They, we sat there for like hours. Do you know if they did any gunshot residue tests on you? They took my mouth swab. Oh, 
hope this makes sense to me. So, the father of your child is laying in the floor shot. Your brother just did it. After he shoots him, he leaves out. What makes you go and take the safe and the ammunition and put it in the trash? Why did you do that? That was lost. I it was too much going on. We got kids and everything left everything over here. I had to get this, I had to do something with it. But the ammunition without a gun isn't gonna do anything. No, it's not, but I Any questions based on my question? Uh, first of all, you said you get along with your brother, were you, and you said you didn't tell the police when they got there that your brother was a shooter. Yeah. Were you in some way trying to protect your brother? No, I was. I wasn't trying to protect him. It just, I was lost. I was lost. Like my baby daddy did, my brother like he was like, I don't know how to put it. But it I was lost. Like for real, I, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. I don't know. Did Malik have any uh, weapons in his hands? No, he don't even carry weapons. And did uh did he have did Malik put his hands on you? No, we were not arguing none of that. He won't know he was fighting none of it. I have a All right, thank you, man. Do you have witnesses for the people? Well, Your Honor, so there is a witness outside that was I know uh, that was calling. Uh, that was a, prosecut a prosecution witness, but it was the neighbor that did the, uh, the CPR. I think it'd be relevant at this point. I oh, what? Uh, in terms of a question that I asked this witness, I think goes to the heart of this, this witness's testimony. Give me all the this witness will testify to the fact that Miss Walton had, uh, did, in fact, fire her weapon in the past at what this what the witness will testify to right now, believed to be uh, Mr. Lawson. I don't know. Well, Your Honor, I guess here's the thing. The reason I submit it's relevant is because uh, in terms of an ongoing domestic dispute between Ms. Uh, Walton and her child's father, and, and here we have testimony that not only are there a number of domestic violence uh, runs to the home or reports, and also to the home that the bidding has also testified right now, um, she also fired a weapon uh, in the past Prior to, uh, prior to this incident as well, at the child's father. So, if anything, that would, that would show, I think, further potential motive in terms of her being the shooter or why she'd be the lying. And so, for those reasons, Your Honor, I, I, it'd be a brief testimony, Your Honor. And she's here. And she's here, Your Honor. I'm sorry. You said she didn't shoot. You should testify. Correct. And this one is going to, this one is will impeach her as a liar. It's a different situation. I'm not relevant to this shooter. Your Honor, if, 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 I would limit the testimony to that testimony. I'll just say the second argument. I believe she did shoot it in the past. So it's been ongoing for this okay. And I'd also point out we don't know when all of these calls, he makes it sound like it was just two days, three days prior. Or, you know, it's been over a year. There's an ongoing relationship between the deceiving and the witness that you call. Your Honor, this witness will also testify, will be able to testify in terms of conduct that she personally observed after she heard gunshots as far as what um, as far as what Miss uh, um, Walton did in terms of leaving the house, walking around the side of the house, and conducting herself. This witness will also be able to testify to that to show a cover up, Your Honor. And that's why it's relevant. I don't understand why you think you need to call another witness. We already got her throwing away evidence. I am kid. Okay, then I'll take I'll, then I'll then I'll take your lead, Your Honor, because uh, I mean she's she is I mean she is a witness, um, and so I mean obviously she witnessed after the fact. She didn't see the shooting. True, but she, she saw. Can't tell us who was shooting. True, but I do again. I, her testimony would just corroborate. Or excuse me, it would just support this notion of the the uh, misconduct. I would say that commit is um, done by. Ms. Walton after the shooting, or even during the shooting, for that matter. So that's that's what I think this witness would offer, Your Honor, in terms of making her a suspect or giving her tremendous motive to lie. And I think again, it's relevant to to make a record, Your Honor. <coughs> like I said, I'll be brief. I'll just, or just her testimony. You don't know the word. Your Honor, just her statement. Just her statement, Your Honor. That's it. I'm just going to focus on this. It's from the hour on the statement. I know. 
<laughs> you're right. Because, okay. <laughs> you're right. I want to tell you something. Yeah. You're right. You're, 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 I can put me in a box. Give me six, six minutes. Thank you, Ryan. Chelsea Rowe. Chelsea Rowe. Thank you, Deputy. I'm going to get her in here. Yeah, I heard that. Six minutes. Six minutes. Timer on. This on. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I apologize. My apologies. I'm getting, I'm getting, you know, I got, I got a lot of trouble for anybody, you know? <laughs> now, please give your name and spelling of your name to the young lady waiting at you. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or firm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you got? Thank you. Please have a seat in this box right next to me. Let's pull that door open. Yes, ma'am. There's a microphone probably on the floor. You have to size the floor. Just place that in your lap and speak directly into that place. Okay. Maybe getting you ready. It's 3 36 p.m. Thank you. Your Honor, ma'am, good afternoon. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Please say your name for the record. Chelsea Rogan. Okay, Ms. Rogan. And um, are you familiar with the address of um, 184 74 Kelly Road, Detroit, Michigan? Yeah. How are you familiar with that address, ma'am? I'm attached to them. Okay, so your walls actually are connected? Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, all right. Don't breathe into the microphone. Ma'am, if I can bring your attention back to that date, uh, the, uh, the date of uh, January 26, 2024, at around the evening time. Do you recall that date, that date and time? Yeah. Okay. And was there something about that date and time that you were actually ultimately required to provide a statement to law enforcement? Yes. Okay. Um, and as a practical, as a practical matter, was there also something that brought you into the home that we just stated on the date in question? Yes. Okay, why did you go to that home, man? Um, there was, I heard shots um, through the wall. Okay. Well, originally I heard um, yelling and screaming and like little kids crying. Okay. Um, and then I heard shot, like four shots through the wall. Okay. Called 911. Um, I work at EMS already, so I, and he just kind of took over. Sure. And I went over there. Sure. And, and from the body cam, I saw, I believe that you were doing chest impressions. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, that, that was a little bit after he was still alive. Okay. I, 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 listen, I appreciate that. Um, and uh, are you familiar with who lived in that, in that, lo in that uh, residence? Yes. And who would that be? Uh, that's actually, okay. So you, okay. So you know both of them? Yeah. Okay. And um, do you recall? I mean, what I mean, did you have a relationship with both of them? Um, vaguely, I don't really talk to them that much, okay. But we talk every once in a while, okay. Was there anything I guess ever concerning about the relationship that was that, that you were that I was that I guess be brought to your attention between them? Yeah, um, they need to fight for it, okay. And Ma'am, do, do you recall speaking to law enforcement about a, a prior, I guess, event or instance that took place at the house? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, objection. Talks about this event, right? Prior event. Does your honor not want me to ask to go there? I'm um, also keep relevant as to the events. Okay. Ma'am. this case. Sure. Ma'am, you heard shooting, correct? Was that, was that, did that come as a sus? Um, for the most part, yes. Okay. Um, and when this all takes place, ma'am, did you ultimately observe Diamond to be doing anything on the night question? Um, the only thing I observed when I had the 911 call, I went outside. Yeah. And I kind of like slowly crept over to the house. Yeah. Um, when I came outside my door, I didn't see her 
Okay. But again, you so you see your test was that you started running outside. Do you know you, did you see where she went when she ran outside? She just went around the corner real quick, like I don't know that she wasn't there very long and came back. Okay. You don't know if she was I don't know what she was doing. She okay. just kind of went around the corner. Okay, I appreciate that. And um, did you have any dealings with uh, with Malik ever? Yes. Okay. Those positive interactions with him. Sometimes. Okay. But sometimes not. Correct. Okay. Um, did any of these bullets that you heard fire, did they enter into your home at all? No. Okay. And how did you know that the bullets were coming from that location? Um, I work in the page, right, and I hear, uh, did you have any personal, I guess, knowledge uh, or reference as to what it would sound like in terms of bullets actually being fired from your neighbor's location? Just from my personal experience. Okay. Not personal experience, being a neighbor? Mm -hmm. Not. When you arrived, man, was uh, was Miss uh, Walton helping you and I guess caring for uh, Malik? Um, I wasn't. Okay. I didn't hear you. I was only caring for him. She was very distraught. Yeah, I appreciate you coming into court today. Thank you very much. Cross is that? Yeah, I think Rosie. Uh, did you see anybody else at the house besides Molly and Diamond? Yes. Um, I was Felicia. Uh, so you're familiar with Felicia? I only heard her name in passing, like they were okay. talking to each other. And and you testified that. Um, you would hear Diamond and her living boyfriend argue? Yes. Uh, and you said that was Malik. Uh, did anybody else live at the house that you know? Um, just children. Okay. Did you know if her uh, brother lived at the house? I was never seen. Okay. And what did you see uh, Felicia doing? Um, initially, when I went outside to go up to the yeah, I was on the sidewalk going from the house. I saw her running up to the house for Kelly. Um, and then she went into the backyard. Was she alone? Yes. Oh. I heard her calling out for Diamond. You heard her calling out for Diamond? Yes. Did she uh, go back to the house at all? Uh, yeah, she was uh, there both in the hospital. Yeah, that's just so much. Okay. Um, at some point, did the police leave? Um, I'm not certain. I'm, I was with the uh, victim. So after I started helping him, um, I know she was there for a little bit, but I don't know what happened after the police left. That situation. So, at the time of the shooting, you know, who was in the house? Uh, no, I can only tell you. And how? So, how quickly did you uh, look out from your from outside? Is that what you said? Yeah, I hung up with 911. Um, I went outside and I just slowly walked over. I didn't go up there until like I'm sorry, I'm like an assailant, someone with a gun still there. And did you see anybody with a gun? No. Uh, do you remember telling the police? We should arrive after the shooting. Yes, that's that's what I saw. 
How long have you been? So you were already inside their house? No, I was on the outside. Oh. Did you see any guns inside the house? No. Um, do you know what happened to the kids? No. I, when I got there, I was immediately upstairs. I was like, she was like, that's the thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ran over there and they came back with the tires. Any questions based on my questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. You may sit. All right. Can we have a motion? People need to find over um, on a probable cause basis. Yeah, people approve the word burden. Um, Mr. Walton did testify they picked up the defendant, came back to the house. I don't know what happened there exactly, and Mr. Walton wasn't very clear. It sounds like perhaps there's an argument that potentially went down the road about self defense or defense of others. Uh, however, that that's not for this court, and any self defense is a factual matter for the jury. Um, there is evidence based on this wall that the gun was missing. Um, the ammo box is on the defendant's bed. Uh, I don't want to foreshadow the defense's argument that I don't think self defense or defense of others is what they're angling for. I think they're probably angling for identity. No, I as to this defendant being the shooter. Right. And I understand that as well. Um, however, at this time, we do have evidence from this wall that the defendant's the shooter. The ammo, the box of ammo is on the defendant's bed. And you think this court should find this Walton's testimony to be credible? So I know that there's some credibility issues there, but I believe that she was, in fact, trying to protect her brother that she cared about. Um, and I think that's why originally she didn't tell the police that he was a shooter. She didn't know what to do in that moment between her baby's father and her brother. And she wants justice for Malik, but she doesn't want the defendant to be in trouble. That's, that's my uh, listening to her. Well, she couldn't explain it to me. Maybe you can. Why is she throwing away evidence? Judge. That I can't explain either. But again, it goes back to this is her brother that she was and cared for. She may be trying to protect him. Um, during the video, eventually, she does open up the video about Mr. Uh, took some portion, I guess, is what I could say based on uh, questioning from Mr. Chaffee. But, uh, she does open up, she does admit finally that it was her brother. And I don't think she wanted to do that. Um, since then, the family doesn't talk to her. This is not perfect. That's not evidence. That's too many facts on evidence. I'm sure that means. But she did testify that she cared a lot about her brother. Had no reason why about him. Uh, there's no evidence of any other. Maybe she does have a reason why. She does have a reason why it was a lot. I'm not saying it is or it is. Maybe she does have a reason that maybe she's the shooter. And Judge, I would argue that that's something for the jury to decide. I think that this is a tribal issue. Obviously, there's other witnesses out there. We have children um, that have not made statements or anything. But the purpose of uh, someone more credible before the court, where's Felicia, whatever your name is. Um, Felicia, she was unable to be found. Interesting. I don't know if you need to, well, I see the test fire as to his offense or anything. But, um, so the numbers that we have don't work anymore. Uh, the officer in charge so they didn't have a valid address or went to her house, but she, she wasn't. I find that interesting too, but Felicia doesn't want to be uh, found. Uh, that's correct. I found it interesting as well. Um, but based on what we have here today, there is enough evidence to find an open problem with us. Thank you. As a practical matter, my recollection it was that she explicitly said she's not here trying to protect her brother. I believe that was the, 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 the likes of her testimony. But that being said, Your Honor, 
Here's what we know. It was her gun. She tries to discard evidence. She's doing really weird things after this happens. The neighbor who can't come in and, and issues CPR said that she's just sitting there. Not, I believe that's a testimony, but in terms of um, what she observed when she went to the house, the, the witness that just testified it is. Uh, it was going to testify also that she's heard arguments before. She's testified that she knew that whether it was um, Diamond's gun or not, she did reference a prior instance where she had familiarity with the gun and Diamond being the one with that gun. All that being said, Your Honor, take everything into consideration. We also have the text message that I brought up that I don't think should be overlooked. I'm not saying this court is overlooked, but I presented to this witness that the text message sent from her child from Malik to her at 1046 p.m. on the night, day of the homicide was, again, quote, this is the end of this bitch. I don't care if you do start over the, from the bottom. You are going to learn today. Mark my words. I mean, that sounds like a threat to me, Your Honor. Uh, that being said, again, taking everything in its totality, and I have the utmost uh, trust in this court that you were paying close uh, de detailed attention to everything that was being testified to or lack of being testified to, um, I would argue at this point, Your Honor, even by a probable cause threshold, the only evidence we have right now is someone saying that my client shot Malik uh, with nothing to corroborate or actually link that from uh, to, to link my client to being the shooter and all the evidence pointing toward her, Your Honor. I would submit from a probable cause standpoint, uh, the prosecution has not met their burden. We ask that this matter be thrown out. All right. So, Mr. Kelly, you this is one of those situations that the second one of today where I found a witness was pretty much wholly incredible. It's not a whole lot that I can say I believe from her testimony right after she said her name. <clears throat> to say the least, her testimony was suspicious. Thank you, officer. And that a lot of what she says just makes no sense whatsoever. I find it hard to believe that the defendant just out of the blue, for no reason, just comes downstairs and starts shooting. Pretty much empties the gun from the testimony operator. And then is able to leave without the pausing or anything just leaves before the next door neighbor gets over there and the only person she sees there is Diamond and Felicia. Then we have Diamond leaving, going around the corner for a few seconds and coming back. More than ample enough time to dispose of the weapon if that's what she was doing. If she's in fact shooting, I don't know if she is or not. But it's her gun. She gets into it with the deceased quite regularly. And then she disposes of evidence, throwing evidence in the trash. <coughs> it would take a pretty dirty person to come this from the brother. In fact, your brother did not do this. That's where my struggle is. Out of all the people in the world focusing, why would you choose your brother? I'm not sure if you live there or not. But if he had nowhere else to go, I'm sure who stays at on Marlowe Street. This happened on Kelly Road. <clears throat> Could a rational trier of fact find that the defendant did this as the witness Diamond says and then left out? Or could a rational trier of fact find that? It was someone else other than the thing who did this for whatever bizarre reason. This, di this diamond is throwing away the gun, ammunition, and leaving the house, not telling anybody who did this, 
until confronted by some issue with her children being left alone in the car. I think there's a lot that could have been done to tighten this case up by way of perhaps, I'm not sure if it was done or not, perhaps doing a gunshot residue test on diamond in terms of even establishing that the defendant was in fact there at the location at the time. I way of cell phone records if he does in fact have a cell phone, I'm not sure if he does or not. With some, in addition to this witness who's all over the place, she's, oh my God, not all in her seat, twisting and turning. Just a terrible display of the witness who's been caught in lie after lie on the stand. Maybe I did say that. I, I had a lot going on. She was even saying that when she made a 9 call, but it's a lot going on. Yeah. Probably the child has just been shot and killed. It would be a shame for this court to bind this matter over based on her testimony alone being as incredible as her testimony was. So for that reason, the court is going to dismiss this matter. <laughs> I'm not gonna have that. You're gonna go the rest of the street. Thank you, Ron. Never see what that what a concept. Yeah, I appreciate that. Good to write up. Got it. I'm sorry to your loss. No, no, no. We're going to let them leave first, okay? That concludes the docket for today, folks. Hope to see you tomorrow, same bad station, same bad time. Your Honor, there's insufficient evidence, which we wrote in terms of insufficient evidence.